something inside that affects the heart. When the first schedules come out, you riled up like, yeah, we play Florida State this year, we're ready to go. It's very emotional. You got to prepare yourself for that. It's one of the reasons they come to the University of Miami. It's all the world. They've gotten the best of us in a close game. It's up. Yes, it's right. Kick on the way. Wide enough is enough. They're coming into our house. You want to try to just keep them down as long as you can. It's all about bragging rights. Leave it all on the line. One team, one heartbeat. It's now or it's never. What you going to do? There are great rivalries in college football. You think of Ohio State against Michigan, Texas, Oklahoma, Auburn, Alabama. We'll have to wait until later in the year for those matchups. John Saunders, Craig James, and Aaron Taylor. Not so here in the great state of Florida as we get the intense one right out of the gate. And you talk about intensity. The quarterback position is one of those deals where because of the intensity of this game, they are the scrutinized position. You see the animosity out there on the field before the ball game. These two teams don't like each other. They've known each other for a long time. Speed causes causes mistakes and these two quarterbacks are going to see speed tonight when they snap the football that they've never seen and those mistakes will come now which team's going to make the fewest mistakes we'll find out I'll tell you what guys I've played in games like this and ladies and gentlemen when you're at home and you're a little boy and you're doing your thing and you're thinking about making a great catch or a great throw or a great block or a great tackle it's in a game like this that's going on underneath the lights a heated rivalry the national stage this is what football is about if I had good knees and another year of eligibility <laughs> We might get you a snap out there tonight. They couldn't get a helmet to fit him, though. <laughs> Miami and Florida State, it's coming up next. <laughs> Looking live at Dope Campbell Stadium in Tallahassee, Florida, Chief Osceola prepares to open another season for the Seminoles of Florida State. From Miami, rides into town with a six-game winning streak against the Noles. And a new quarterback, Kyle Wright, from Danville, California. We welcome you to the ADT BCS Spotlight Game. It's an ACC conference matchup between Miami and Florida State. Welcome, everybody. I'm Brett Musburger, along with Gary Danielson and Jack Aroot. A pleasure to have you along with us here tonight. We should be a dandy game. It is so unusual, folks, to come into Tallahassee with Florida State a home underdog. It has happened only once before in eight years. Back in 2001, Miami came in favored by a touchdown and won by 22. So for the 30th consecutive year, the all-time winningest coach in Division I, Bobby Bowden, will lead his Seminoles out on the field. But only one stat matters to him tonight. Snap the six-game Miami winning streak. It has happened every which way that you can imagine. Blowouts, wide right, wide left, blocked field goals, overtime, you name it, ladies and gentlemen, and it has backfired against Florida State. But if you turn one play around in about three games, the coaches will tell you they could be 500 against Miami. You saw that scene of the players at midfield. Many of them very close friends played on the high school teams. Yes, there was animosity, but no punches were thrown. And now we wait for the Knowles, and here they come. Two new quarterbacks, yeah. Drew Weatherford here, Kyle Wright now. We see them from Miami on the right hand. Are they ready? Well, Brett, they have enough talent, and they are prepared. And now I think it comes down to a word for both of these guys. The word is trust. First, individually, they have to put away their game plans and just trust their instincts and play with feel. Then they have to win the trust of their coaches. They have to get the full playbook to beat the other defenses. They're that good. And lastly, and this is the hardest, Charlie Ward did it. Ken Dor Chris Dorsey did it. Ken Dorsey did it. You have to gain the trust of your teammates. That's the final step if you want to be a champion quarterback. 
Best performance by a quarterback win automatically here? Not necessarily. What separates this football game is there's so many great players on the field that it could be a defensive end, a defensive tackle, an offensive tackle. Anybody could determine this football game. Take your pick. My guess, whichever offensive line is best, that's the team that wins. All right, some 80-some thousand on hand. And now Chief Osceola aboard Renegade as the captains from both Florida State and Miami meet at the center of the field. Our referee, and he's a good one, Jack Childress here tonight. He worked the game a year ago in the Orange Bowl. He'll bring the captains together. Remember in the ACC, just like the Big Ten a year ago, we do have instant replay. Every play being constantly reviewed upstairs by an observer. There are no coaches' challenges in the ACC, not like the National Football League. You would almost think, Gary, with uh, two first-time starters at quarterback, that the coaches are hoping they get to uh, go on defense Absolutely. Here. Both defenses feel they can win this game if the quarterback doesn't lose it. The wind should not be too much of a factor, although it does swirl down here, and it can be tricky for the kickers on both teams. And, of course, the history of this matchup is just complete with so many misses by the Knowles in the fourth quarter. <laughs> Talking to the Knowles who won the flip. They can defer, which they do. That means they will be able to go on defense. Miami undoubtedly will take the football, and we'll see Kyle Wright at the start of the game. Well, Jack Arudis with Coach Bobby Bowden. And uh, Jack, does he still get as thrilled as ever 30 years into this business? You know, Brent, Brent, I asked Bobby about that, and the thrill remains. But for the last six times when this game was over, you came out on the losing side of things. None of your players, Coach, have ever experienced a victory in this contest. So what did you tell them in the locker room? Well, the, you don't worry about that, Jack. This is another ball game, and that's all you care about. You don't care what happened last year or the year before. When you take a look at your team, are they fully prepared, or would you rather play this game later in the season? Oh, I just threw play it now. We both have the same problem. We both are breaking in a new quarterback, so that equals out. I'd hate, I'd hate to be facing a senior quarterback, you know? Brent, the, the one thing he did tell his team is he reminded them that out on the field tonight, seven national championships are represented. Thank you, Jack. And uh, Chief Osceola officially opening the season here in Tallahassee with the flaming spear. Chucked into the logo at the center of the field. Larry Coker, his fifth year at Miami. And the young man from Danville, California, Kyle Wright, undoubtedly nervous a little bit about his first start thrown only nine passes that's the line coach Art Keogh he says just keep me safe and already telling him how to uh, how to handle that offensive line to a man they all say that Kyle Wright demonstrates great leadership characteristics Gary there's no doubt in my mind Brent that Art Keogh just told Kyle Wright to trust those guys up front they will give him time it's just like practice Go out there, do your job, and my guys will protect you. The great Devin Hester. Four returned punts and kickoffs for touchdowns a year ago. Perhaps the most dangerous return man in college football. And there's their great linebacker here, Sims. You'll be hearing a lot about him for the next couple of years in Tallahassee, and then, of course, he will be amongst those joining so many Knowles and Hurricanes who go on to play in the National Football League. This is Misha. Kicks it off. Returnable in good field position for Kyle Wright. Out to the 33-yard line. 
So here is Kyle. He's a six foot four inch sophomore from California. Only nine passes thrown, as we told you. His offensive coordinator, Gary, is Dan Werner in his second year. He will look tonight to try to get right comfortable with the running game because Dan wants to use the play action pass game to control those Florida State linebackers. The deep set running back is Tyrone Moss, number 30. The draw play with Moss to the middle and a first down for the slim down Tyrone Moss, our Dr. Pepper starting lineups. And we have seen Tyrone, who checked in 12 pounds lighter than a year ago, number 30. Centerist Moss, no relation to Tyrone, and that's Santana's brother against this offensive line. But folks, left side, left tackle, number 74. Remember, Eric Winston suffered a major knee injury a year ago, midway through the season. It impacted the Canes running game. He sets down with that left tackle spot now. They show motion with Moss here on a first and ten. White right in trouble. He's sacked at the 42-yard line, surrounded by Broderick Bunkley, the nose man from Tampa, who has replaced Travis Johnson. Now the Knowles defense. We looked at Bunkley moving in. Big shoes to fill. Number 52, Flewellen, Burston, and Windley. And our defensive coordinator, Mickey Andrews, has been at Florida State for 22 years. Ernie Sims, Buster Davis, A.J. Nicholson. There's a story in the defensive backfield. Number 15, Tony Carter. He must replace Fro Marty, who went out with an ACL injury in the spring and won't be here. Second down and 12. They come back with Moss picking his way to daylight. Slashes first down, run out of bounds. So Gary, Tyrone Moss has shown us a lot in two carries already. He looks like he has that ability to make plays more than what it's blocked. Watch how he takes it. There's not much there but five or six yards. Bounces outside and then accelerates to the outside. When Miami was gashing people and running the ball consistently, they had backs like McGahee that would take eight-yard plays and make 28 yards on them. And that's what Miami needs from that tailback position. If he had not lost the weight, we would be saying fullback Tyrone Moss. <laughs> the coaches leveled with him up front and said, we need a slim down tailback. And that's what they've got right now from Pompano Beach, Florida. He was a sensational high school running back inside the 40 yard line for Wright and the Canes, their first series of the game. Steps up, almost intercepted on the deflection at the 20 yard line. So it will be second down and 10 for Miami. You must blink inside. They're trying to get Kyle Wright ready. A quarterback must read those linebackers. And that time it was tipped inside by one of those inside linebackers. I think it was A.J. Nicholson, number 54, that got his hand on it and almost got a turnover for Florida State. Two wides to the wide side of the field using a slot. And they jump the gun into the neutral zone. Well, Jack will get this all sorted out down there. Well, we've talked a lot about Kyle Wright, and we asked him in Miami who he will count on early in this game. That offensive line. You know, I think if uh, if we, we can hold those guys in the trenches and they, they give myself and the running back time to uh, to throw and, and some lanes to run, you know, I think uh, that's really going to set the tone for the ball game. You'll need them now because it's second down and 15 after the five-yard penalty is marched off. Moss steps right out to the quarterback's right from the shotgun. This is the formation that Brock Berlin preferred as the quarterback a year ago. The inside handoff, and Moss battles his way just beyond the original line of scrimmage. So, Gary, tough third down play coming up here. Yeah, and this is the one where Kyle Wright has to earn the trust of the coaching staff and his teammates. You don't want to make a mistake, but if you can pick up plays like this, it lifts your offense and your defense to say, we got the right guy. Again, Brent, Moss ran through a tackle. He looks like a different back. They have emptied it out with Moss going to the sideline. Number nine, Lance Leggett, is now on the field. A big-time prospect. They're going to throw out of the shotgun on this third and nine. A 
Offensive line breaks down. Wright will have to take off. A little bit better runner than Brock Berlin, but certainly not in the Vince Young mold out of Texas as Kyler Hall, the rover from Live Oak, Florida, makes the stop. Now, do they attempt a field goal in this little breeze right to left? I think they trust Petty. They, they have a good kicker there, and it has great range. You know, that was, again, great pass rush from Florida State coming from the end position against those great tackles from Miami. That's an early edge to Florida State putting pressure on the quarterback. Brian Monroe is the holder this year. This is his first time as a holder. He's got to get it down for Petty, and it's not going to be long enough, I don't believe, in this win. No. Miami threatens, but a tip pass and a penalty stalls Coker's offense. Keeping his spirits up, knowing that he may need him. Now, Drew Weatherford. We will have his debut when we come back to Tallahassee. From Land Lakes, Florida, just down the road, Weatherford with uh, his first start ever as a Seminole. First down and, and 10. Leon Washington is jammed by that hurricane defense. Weatherford took one snap, and it was against North Carolina. Twisted his ankle, so he was redshirted a year ago. And his offensive coordinator, Gary, is Jeff Bowden, son of coach Bobby Bowden. Double-edged sword here tonight for Jeff Bowden. He's got a new quarterback and new terminology with his system. All the plays called by Jeff tonight will be new to him also. In the heat of the battle, you wonder how he reacts also, grabbing a play. Showing a different formation here on second down and long. Then they reposition the fullback for the running game. So two conservative calls, and Washington battles for only a couple. And John Beeson, linebacker from Miramar, making the stop. Our Dr. Pepper Florida State lineup, backs and receivers. You see Leon Washington in there. We'll also get Lorenzo Booker, Anton Smith, a freshman, will get a lot of carries. Here's your offensive line. And they're zone blocking this year behind the new coach, Mark McHale. A huge difference. Terminology has changed. You'll see wristbands on the quarterbacks at Florida State. It means there's longer time calling a play in the huddle, but they try to get the number quickly into Weatherford, who throws incomplete on his first pass of the night. And it was intended for Kenny O'Neill, a redshirt freshman. You can really see the game plan for Miami. Safety's up at the line of scrimmage. Miami has blitzed three straight plays. They play tight man-to-man -man coverage, and they're going to force Weatherford or whomever the quarterback is for Florida State to throw the ball down the field. And there is the Miami weapon, Devin Hester. Chris Hall is the punter for the Knowles, standing at about the 18-yard line. Punting away off of Hester. He bobbled it. Battle for the ball, out of bounds. The Knowles are trying to influence, and they've got it. Side judge was on top of it as Hester makes a critical mistake in the early moments of this game. It was recovered by Kenny Phillips. Let me check that right now. Hester tries to make too much out of this play. Ball's on the sideline, and Freddie Rouse, wide receiver, one of the young guns for Florida State jumps on that. Sideline judge was right there saying it wasn't on the line. I had the right number I on know, the wrong team. I know, And they're both good, great, great players, too. <laughs> I'll take the first turnover of the, uh, the new season. You know, uh, when great players try to do too much, it's not just young players. Devin Hester was trying to make a play out of nothing there, and he botched it. Second series coming up now for Kyle Wright. As they will not get him on the field because it'll be Drew Weatherford immediately. This is going to be reviewed, looks like, to me. Well, I, from up here, well, it was hard to say. Yeah, it's, it was uh, close. It was the sideline that was over there that uh, that concerned me. Play on the is under review. Or whether Rouse had his leg on the sideline when he recovered the ball. Number one, it looked... Freddie looked like his leg might have been on the sideline. It's typical reviewable play.
From above, you see Hester hits it. Ball's inbound, inbound. Boy, that looked like he got it to me. Yes, he did. His legs were in the field of play. Yes, it was. Neither leg was outside the sideline. You want to quibble with where the helmet is. Ball's when he wraps right it up, there. You can see it. Can. There's a few inches. I don't Pulls think it, it ever back. touched the line. His right, his hand might have touched it. So we'll we will let the uh, remember the uh, the observer up on top now will interpret the uh, the ruling down on the field. And and so, so while we've got a moment, let me remind you about our triple header. As uh, Notre Dame certainly excited their fan base, didn't they? With that win in Pittsburgh, well, big one at noon Eastern. Then those are the games we'll be covering later in the afternoon with regional coverage. And then, Gary, you and I will be in Columbus for Texas and Ohio State. Well, that should be fun. Get the, all those 100,000 Buckeye fans there will be just as good as this one. You know, you know, we expect a low-scoring game, right? I mean, so an uh, early play like this is huge. They are now explaining to the crowd that the uh, plays cannot be challenged, that it is the observer upstairs who is interpreting what he saw with the Rouse on the sideline, with the hand, the helmet, possession of the ball. Let's look about how the two teams can win this football game. I think both defenses feel they can win it. Their number one goal is to shut down the run and then harass the quarterbacks. I think they'll do that coming inside with the blitzes and then both defense this will say no cheapies make them earn every yard if they complete some passes or make some runs okay but let's not miss a tackle and let them go all the way to the house on just one play make them make a 10 play drive now the uh, referee Jack Childress goes over to put on the headset and uh, he will be uh, communicating with the observer and uh, it is interesting that all the Miami players are out there. They were standing right next to the play, and they're not arguing at all. Yeah, that was kind of interesting. Yes. They didn't. No, nope. and it's over on their sideline. Right. And we didn't see people jumping up and down. No, they they thought it was a fumbled recovery. Of course, it was called that play. And now the question is: there a, is there enough evidence to change the call with that official three feet away right there? Well, we go back to the punt itself, and clearly they were punting to the sideline because Hester back down there deep and uh, that's how much they respect him and then uh, Hester got over too close to the uh, to the football kicking team player recovered the football while he was out of bounds out of bounds the ball goes to the receiving team first down A break for Miami as instant replay gives the ball back to the Canes. Huge play, taking the pressure off Devin Hester. I, I got to be surprised. I, I, I would not have changed that myself. I took a stand before that, and I didn't think, I thought he had control of it before his hand came down. Very, very close play. Brings the Canes up. Moss back in as his tailback. Ortega is the H back. Straight back under enormous pressure. Intercepted at the 43 yard line. Picked off by Kyler Hall, the river. And Hall takes it inside the 10 yard line. First and goal. A penalty flag thrown on the return. On the return, not on the pass. You know, maybe the best thing that could happen to Florida State is not to get the ball. Look at that pass rush against Eric Winston. The ball sails high. Interception. There's a block away from the play, behind the play, that's going to move the ball back. After the interception, there was an illegal block in the back by the return team. Ten-yard penalty, first down. You can see from the outside right here, Winston is going to give pressure, speed rusher to the outside, gets his hand on Kyle Wright, pressure up the middle, the ball sails, 
And there is a big play made by defense. Weatherford back on the field, and he has switched running backs. Washington is out, and Lorenzo Booker, the 5'11 junior from California, and they motion him out of the backfield. He's an excellent receiver. So Coach Jeff Bowden wants to go empty with the offense. Fired incomplete, and uh, that looked a little low, Gary, to uh, Chris Davis as we uh, check this uh, Miami defense that uh, they are gambling on moving Atkins, number 98, a little bit undersized for a tackle, so they'll be checking him. But he and Orion Harris were very good players a year ago. The, the linebackers, they go six deep. We've already seen John Beeson make an impact. And here in the defensive backfield, now yeah, they've always got speed and talent there. Second down and 10 for the game. No safety back for Miami. They are up there, crowd the line of scrimmage. Very short of the 25. The Tackle carry, made by Greg Street, who battled his way back into the starting lineup late this week. As of last Thursday, uh, he was not a starter. So it's Miami and Florida State. It is the opening Monday nighter. The NFL not opening on Labor Day weekend. They, of course, will be back starting next Monday. And we've got the big one of the college weekend. Two ACC teams now, remember, Florida State and Miami. Let's see if they don't try to get Weatherford out of the pocket. Both teams have been having trouble with their pass protection. Timeout is called by Weatherford. So we'll take a break and then come back to see if the Knowles can convert this third down play. Football on ABC Sports is brought to you by Dr. Pepper and your local Dr. Pepper bottler. Dr. Pepper, one taste and you get it. Pontiac, go online to vote for this week's Pontiac game changing performance and Aflac. Ask about it at work. Scoreless underway. Big third down here, Gary, for the Knowles. Interesting. Florida State, Brent, has two tight ends in one back and two receivers. I suspect they're keeping an extra tight end in to chip on those defensive ends for Miami and help with early protection because the blitz has been coming so much. Let's see if Miami sees that and backs off in a zone. Willie Reed out to the left. Whether for changing up at the line. Inside of five on the play clock and the inside handoff. Can he stay on his feet? Down at the two-yard line. First down and goal as Booker scoots 24 yards, stumbling all the way, but it'll be first and goal for Florida State. They call him thunder and lightning, and this time lightning does the cutback, comes across the green, runs by two Miami tackles that would have saved and stopped the first down. But great backs make extra yards, and so far both of the tailbacks for Miami and Florida State have made extra yards. Booker stays in the game. Coleman the lead back for Weatherford. Booker on a cutback, and he was smacked right now by Pata. Brian Pata, a defensive lineman out of Miami, closed the hole in a hurry, number 95 there. Booker is just yelling for the ball one more time. He wants the ball again. B.J. Dean in as an extra blocker. Both pullbacks are ahead of Booker. Second down and goal for Weatherford. Straight ahead. The power play. Touchdown. Florida State. James Coleman. The fullback. The 260-pound senior who inside the five mountain will use powers across for the game's first score. Asis Mesha tacks on the extra point. So just like that, taking advantage of the interception. Running the ball State. inside. 
side and gets this Miami undersized line. State scores first, just as they did a year ago down in Miami. Then they were tied up in the fourth quarter and lost it in overtime. Devin Hester, who was saved a turnover by instant replay, but then on the uh, next sequence, the pass was intercepted. And Florida State marched in for the touchdown. Sismatia with the ball on the tee. Deep in the end zone, he comes out. And is thrown down short of the 20-yard line. Let's check in down below with Jack Aroot. Well, Brent, we've all been affected by what took place in the Gulf Coast region and in New Orleans. Four. University of Miami players and one coach, Curtis C.J. Johnson, had family that were either evacuated to Houston or other environs. But for Akeem Jala, there is still some uncertainty. His mom, she evacuated with her family, but his, her, his uncle still remains unaccounted for in New Orleans. And all of us pray for he and his family. All right, Jack, we certainly hope for a happy ending to that story so many others. Miami trailing it by seven. They come back with Moss and he pounds his way to the 24 and there's a there's a fresh there's a fresh approach that Tyrone Moss is bringing as a running back before Sam McGrew the linebacker was able to bring him down. He sure is Brent but watch out there there's not a lot of experience from that Florida State defensive line but they have been penetrating and moving that Miami offensive line around and have been effective in the pass rush from the outside and the inside second down and you wonder if they'll stay conservative here with right under center in his first start trailing it by seven and they do just that short of the first down we asked coach Coker if he would scale down the Miami offense for Kyle Wright we've got to throw the ball downfield some and we've got to use his abilities if we if we scale down too much then now you take the wide receivers out of it you take Greg Olson or tied in out of it so we've got it we've got to scale down some but we really got to let him be a quarterback also now what they have to do most of all is block number 34 Ernie Sims and, and and to the outside the defensive ends and they threw on first down last time and they had an interception Right stays deep almost intercepted he threw behind the tight end Olsen at the 35 yard line and the Canes are forced to pump forced to punt and Gary the one thing for a first time starter quarterback when you start off shaky like this it's tough Well, oh, you got to fight it you got to fight your instincts relax and play ball but that was not only behind it was high that's a nervous throw when you throw him high you're not letting it go you're not releasing the football the ball goes high you have to release it Now Willie Reed's turn with Monroe standing inside the 10 yard line coming off a terrific sophomore season as a Kane punter. And a Miami bounce to the 35 yard line and that's where Florida State will take possession and it's time for our Dr. Pepper ACC update and here are the new divisions if you will you see Florida State's in the Atlantic Miami in the coastal what that means is when they go to the ACC championship game in Jacksonville Florida on the other side of the state over on the East Coast the two could meet again now when you take a look at that schedule a couple of trap games in there Boston College look good against BYU out in Provo they will host Florida State Miami on the other hand has to travel to Virginia Tech on November 5th and a lot of folks are saying that tech team Gary could be challenging for a national title and, this year and they're going to grow and grow you look at the pass yards double zero neither quarterback has completed a pass in this football game to their own team yeah there was that big interception <laughs> which uh, which did set it up in a timeout 
has been called and that is their second time out and you can see on the graphic the upper part of your screen that they are down now to one here in the first half. We're going to take a break 653. Can the Knowles keep it going. We'll find out. First down after the second Florida State timeout. Ball is on the Seminole 35 yard line. Lorenzo Booker, who looked good on that last series, stays in as Bowden's tailback. Miami's safeties are playing as close to the line of scrimmage as you've ever seen. They don't believe their seven man front can stop the run. They are crowding the line of scrimmage. Set the screen to Booker, an excellent receiver. Had to get away from his own man, running very well in space tonight. Diving for the first down for Florida State, I believe. Let's get down below and check in with Jack. Well, Brent, if you're offensive coordinator Jeff Bowden for the Florida State Seminoles, sometimes you have two freshman quarterbacks, you're a little bit concerned. Bowden went unconventional and decided to mic his quarterbacks. Take a listen in the scrimmage. 26, view reverse, I'm over. 26, view reverse, I'm over. And the key for Jeff Bowden was it proved to me that my quarterbacks were ready to play for Florida State. First down and 10 now. They pick up a another first down with Lorenzo Booker, who has been the big offensive star. They now switch back to Washington, Thunder and Lightning. Now, we want to talk some more about Jeff Bowden because folks make no mistake about it. When you go around Tallahassee and you talk to people who follow this football team, Jeff Bowden is on the hot seat. It is a major, major story in college football. Last year, only 25 points a game. That is their lowest point production since 1981. Gary. There's no doubt that Jeff was never comfortable with his quarterback the last couple of years. He called games defensively, and when you're trying to play in better talent in the ACC, playing defensively, you have a tough time moving the ball. On second down. And Washington gets the corner turned. A 24-yard burst, and I think that Booker brought a little competition into that position. That's the best one of the night by Lee. Well, I'll tell you, they get it sealed over here, the tight end, and out to the outside, going wide. Got a little hold right there, away from a hold by Carter, the tight end. But around the outside, what the backs from Florida State are doing with this zone blocking, the new scheme, is reading the holes and bouncing to the outside or inside. Now they come back with Booker. First down. Toss play to Booker behind Dean, the fullback. Patiently waited for a little daylight and then rammed inside the 20 yard line. Marcus Maxey, senior defensive back from Nevada, Texas, and one of the fastest players on the Miami team, makes the stop. So here is Lorenzo Booker. Some of you are probably watching. Notre Dame, of course, expected him to put on a Notre Dame cap a few years back. And instead, he reached and grabbed the Florida State camp and joined up with the Seminoles. Not unlike Anton Smith, who's a freshman that we may see tonight. Miami expected him to enroll there. But then at the last minute, Smith, like Booker before him, decided to come to Tallahassee and play for the Knowles. And that time, the Kane defense was too good. Big 95 standing in there again, and Pata making another stop. And a reminder, Pat looks to be a little bit shaken up on this as he's down the field. Let's talk a little bit more about Booker, uh, Brent. Florida State went and visited Norm Chow, ex-offensive coordinator for USC, now with the Titans, about using Booker similarly the way that Norm Chow used Reggie Bush. You could see it with the toss play around the outside. Get your guy, your speed guy in space. We will see Booker with screens like we've seen in this drive and flanked out within this game plan. The other thing we can't say enough about is David Castillo, the center for Florida State. A year ago in Miami, Castillo unable to play because of an injury. Then Matt Meinrod, who is starting a guard tonight, he tore up a knee in the third quarter and he couldn't play. Castillo 
is a terrific leader out there on the field. Here's a young man who wants to be an orthopedic surgeon. So not only is he attending football practice, working on a new playbook with new terminology, taking tests in an effort to get into medical school. One of those terrific academic stories that you run into on these campuses. David Castillo, 6'2", 304, from Palm Beach Gardens, just outside of West Palm. On the toss play, Washington almost tipped it, driven out of bounds by the 20-yard line, and there's Maxie, number 24, getting him out of bounds on the play, and also number 52, Tavares Gooden, the linebacker from Fort Lauderdale, was there. Story of this football game for me is Miami has been attacking on defense every play. They've been giving up some big plays when they don't stop it early. Florida State has a chance. When a team attacks you like that, there are big plays available to you. 37-yard attempt here by Gary Sismatia from Bradenton, Florida. Now Bowden is hoping he sees something like that in the fourth quarter. <laughs> 37 yards. That was not wide right or wide left. That was right down Broadway. And an underdog Florida State team jumps on Miami, trying to snap this six-game losing streak, and it'll be uphill for the Canes. Now, you know, we mentioned Jeff Bowden and the fact that he's been under fire and heavily criticized. And we asked Coach Bowden, does the criticism of your son, the offensive coordinator, bother you about it? Oh, sure it does. You know, people can't get to me. I've been here too darn long, and so they, they know getting on him gets to me. And I think a lot of them try to get to me. They don't want, I'm so sweet. They don't want, they don't want to hurt me, you know? So get on, get on Junior there. Watch Daddy bow up, you know? <laughs> <laughs> Very honest indeed it hurts when uh, one of your own is... Uh is criticized but uh, no criticism here with him up by 10. <laughs> no and remember you know and people have been telling me since uh mark rick has left it's never been the same well chris winky left at the same time and i think that you know you have an experienced quarterback versus an inexperienced quarterback or a underperforming quarterback it's much more difficult for the offensive coordinator now when you look back uh, from 1987 to 2000 Bobby Bowden and the Seminoles always finish in the top five. The last four years, they've lost 15 football games. So that has been unlike his run here in Tallahassee. He's got a chance, though, to snap that losing streak here tonight. But again, Miami battled back a year ago to win in the Orange Bowl. On the ground away from Hester. He scoops it up. At the 13-yard line. So a variety of kicking efforts. Beeson getting into it a little bit after the whistle there. You better believe that there is some puffing in this game. And our aerial coverage is uh, courtesy of the Outback Steakhouse Airship. Bloomin' Onion. The Outback Steakhouse Airship specializes in college football and PGA golf coverage. Look for the Bloomin' Onion at sporting events throughout the year. This is a blooming good matchup. It is, but Daniels. right now Kyle Wright has to prove to his teammates and his coaching staff that he can make plays in this football game. I think Miami needs to throw the ball on the outside. There's inexperience at corner for Florida State. They run the draw play on first down out to the 30-yard line. Kyle Wright, Gary, is 0 of 3 with that one interception, which led to the game's only touchdown. You mentioned it. Antonio Cromarty is not playing for Florida State. Not a lot of experience at corner for Florida State in this football game. A lot of skill for Miami at the wide receiver position. Take it, make it easy on Kyle Wright. Throw the ball to the outside of the field where he doesn't have to read all those linebackers over the middle. You would think that they'd get Ryan Moore isolated on a smaller corner and see what they've got. Tony Carter is matched against him. Wright looks in the other direction on the run. Throws to the tight end, Olsen for a first down underneath. How about that throw, Garrett? Got outside of the pocket, got him away from all the traffic in front of him, gave him an easy throw to get him off the, the, the nine right here. Kyle Wright can throw a beautiful ball, but when you're not confident, you kind of pull the string a bit. He's been pulling the string as well as that pass rush inside. Darnell Jenkins comes onto the field, one of the wideouts for the Canes. He's a junior out of Miami Central. He's out to the left side. There's Olsen, the transfer number 82. 
Ortega, the H-back, looking to help out on the defensive lineman. And the middle is jammed by Mickey Andrews Knowles that time. The one thing about a Mickey Andrews defense, they get a chance to start jumping on you. Those rascals can flex play down there for Mickey. There he is. Mickey Andrews, folks, you know he's a football player just by looking at him at Alabama. What you might not remember is he was a dang good baseball player up there. Here's for the Bear. He was one of the Bears boys. And he looks like a coach, though, doesn't he? You bet. Second down. Fake by White under pressure. This time goes deep. Incomplete. And more, and a penalty flag down. If interference is called, that's a 15 yarder and another first down down there. They got more on Gerard Ross. And it's almost a mismatch. Moore, who had such a tough season last year, only three catches. Miami goes deep. I like the strategy. Get the ball downfield. Get the ball to the wide receivers and let those young corners for, my, for Florida State make a mistake. You can see it. Got to Moore just before the ball did, and that's a good call. It was the left arm reaching up under the breastplate. And caused the flag. But again, unlike the NFL, where there would have been a spot right there at the, at the interceptions, 15 yards in the, in the college game. This will move the ball just across midfield. That was a pretty good throw, didn't yes, you Yes, it was. A little bit behind him that time, but Ross is playing the boundary. He's always into the short side of the field to protect him a bit. Giving him plenty of protection against this Seminole rush. Now right off the fake has all day to fire it on there first it down and there he's going to feel his rhythm. There it is. That's what you got to do to a young quarterback. Get him away from throwing the ball in traffic over the middle. He probably loves to throw the ball to Chris Olsen. He's been successful with it in practice. But these linebackers for Florida State are bothering him. I will tell you that when Kyle Wright has watched this two box here. Yeah, you see there. the timing. The comeback route. Miami runs it as well as anybody in college football to the outside of the field. They just went deep on Ross. This time they went in front of him. 18 more yards to the big rangy receiver Moore. Two years ago, he was sensational. Slowed by injuries a year ago, but he was a disappointment. But he's having a big night right now. And so is this fellow right here. Number 30, Tyrone Moss. Pounding right straight ahead, so he's had himself a 50-yard uh, production already. We remind you that at the conclusion of the game, We'll select a Chevrolet player of the game from each team, and Chevrolet will make a $1,000 contribution to each university's general scholarship fund. Gary, the point I'm going to make about Kyle Wright is if you took all the rating services the year he came out of high school out of Danville, California, he was the number one quarterback oh, prospect in the country. He's now, gifted. he liked Florida State, and they took a shot at him before uh, he decided to go to Miami. He had been a Noel fan. And short of the first down, so it will be third and short as uh, Tyrone Moss again carries. Just look at the tempo of the offensive line now for Miami. Complete a couple passes, you gain a little confidence in your football team, and all of a sudden that Miami offensive line has options to blow off the ball and make some plays. Well, let's see what Coach Warner wants to call here on a third down and short. They need two yards. They must get inside the 21 yard line for the first down Moss is the running back Bartram Hill is the fullback they're going to throw for it got it Olsen juggles out of bounds incomplete they had Olsen for a first down and he couldn't hang on he knows it everybody else does too Boy, that's tough when your young player, your quarterback, puts the ball right there and your go-to guy drops it. So far, Hester's made a mistake. They got away from it. And this time, Olsen makes a mistake that would have been a first down. Now it'll be John Petty. Missed a longer one early. This from 39 yards. This is makeable for Petty. High snap is put down. Curling. No good. He is 0 for 2. 
His field goal production a year ago fell for Coker from 79% to 59%, and he has missed his first two here. It was a high snap. In fairness to Petty, the holder, Monroe the punter, had to quickly get it down. I think that bothered Petty. I really do. Watch, there's Monroe. Checks it. Watch the snap. He's going to have to move it. Let's see if he hits his spot. Looks like he hit his spot. Looks like everything in there. I got to say that Petty missed that kick. The laces were slightly he, back he also. Didn't, he didn't spin right. it. He didn't spin it because he didn't have enough time. And so Monroe did the best he could. He's over talking about it. Remember, this is his first year. I believe the young man's name. You folks in Miami are right. Was it Matt Carter who was a holder down there for a while? Well, anyway, uh, Monroe's in there tonight now. So here come now Drew Weatherford and the Knowles. They're up by 10. They're at home in the first half. Weatherford has to run for his life. Makes a yard, but he does not cough up the football as 98. Baraka Atkins was one of the big fellas coming at him. Great coverage that time by that Miami secondary and linebackers. They jumped all the underneath routes. They guessed right. They figured Florida State might go with one of those underneath short pass patterns. They forced Weatherford to take the ball down and allowed that pass rush to get there. Our first quarter is coming to an end. Florida State has taken advantage of opportunities on the deflection, the interception, and that sets up the touchdown as Kyler Hall puts it inside the five. We'll be back with the second quarter on ABC. Today's singular All-American flashback, Charlie Ward. In leading Florida State to their first national championship, Charlie Ward passed for over 3,000 yards. He threw a school record 27 touchdowns while throwing only four interceptions on his way to becoming the first FSU player to win the Heisman Trophy. Text BOAT to 87654 now on your singular wireless phone to play All-America Trivia for a chance to win a trip to the national championship game. Yes, Spotlight Game presented by ADT. And our BCS Spotlight game is brought to you by ADT. Gary, something that surprises you about the Miami defense here? They've been attacking more than I'm used to, Grant. Usually they like to keep their safeties back and force the team to go the long way. They must feel they don't match up well inside with undersized defensive linemen. They've been up there attacking on every play, and they've given up a few big plays. So uh, Florida State taking advantage of that turnover. They lead it by 10 as we start the second quarter. And with field cam, you look from behind the quarterback, Drew Weatherford, there for a moment. 6'3", 220 pounds. His daddy and his grandfather both played football at SMU down Dallas way. Incomplete. And it'll be second down. Florida State is going to have to throw the ball deep on Miami if they want to go to their wide receivers. They are squatting on the slants and squatting on the crossing routes. Miami's safeties are right in the crossing routes. Top of the hour here from Tallahassee and with Jack Aroot and Gary Danielson. I'm Brent Musburger. Thanks for joining us here tonight as the uh, college football season is coming off a huge opening weekend. And next week, more big games. And then the Sunday afternoon and Monday night rascals and Sunday night, they'll all join us. And football season will be in full swing. Third down and 12. Weatherford throws in underneath and Miami smelled it out. And uh, that is done by Atkins, the um, active linebacker from Sarasota, Florida, there, number 98. Uh, not a bad call by Florida State there. Don't make a big mistake. You got the lead 10 nothing. Let not let Weatherford make a mistake on your own side of the field on third and long. Number four, yeah. Sooner or later, that ball is going to fly to Devin Hester here. So Chris Hall is back, and uh, Devin is standing. Oh, what about his own 42 right there, number four? They try to hang it high. And takes a Florida State bounce down inside the 31 yard line. Well, folks, one of the former Miami greats. Michael Irvin is in the house. We'll hear from him in just a moment with Jack Aru. Always has been, always will be all about. The you. <laughs> if you go back to the last series, you'll remember how accurate Kyle Wright was. And who knows what would have happened 
if Greg Olson had held on to that first down pass. Now let's see if what happened doesn't inspire Dan Warner, the offensive coordinator, to turn this six foot four inch quarterback making his first start loose. He threw the ball well that last series. First down and 10. And he's going to put it up on first down, rolling into his underneath man, Ortega. Battles out toward that first down, that yellow line right there. And uh, Jack, you're with a pretty good wide out from Miami, a future Hall of Famer, my yeah, friend. Yeah, the playmaker, Michael Irvin, is here. You're part of the spoke, uh, part of the fundraising efforts for the University of Miami. You spoke to the team before the game. What'd you tell them, Mike? Well, I talked to them about this is their opportunity to write their history. And the biggest thing out of all the championship teams that I played on, the one great thing that we all shared was we all played for one another. And I asked them to make sure they play for one another tonight. We'll come right back to you, Jack. Second down. Big hole opens up. Tyrone crosses midfield. And Tyrone Moss. Uh, Jack, uh, Michael has to be impressed with what Tyrone is doing here. Well, yeah, but the big thing, Brent, that Mike's been doing when the wide receivers are off the field is you've been coaching them up a little bit. Give us the one thing you told those players. Well, you know, I try to share the knowledge that I have of the game. And one, one thing I shared with them, I said, when you're going up for a football, I know you're taught to catch it in your hands, but if you don't see the DB, then you put the ball on your body because it means he's somewhere close and he's about to hit you and it'll keep you from fumbling the ball. All right, Jack, thank you. First down and 10. Kyle is hit on the release. Battle incomplete. But Wright took his first real lick of this football game. And a little bit slow. Maybe the shoe had come off uh, back in that heel area. Uh, uh, Gary, I got a call here from Deion Sanders. He says if Mike was going to coach the receivers, I want the DBs. Well, that would be a good matchup. We've seen it before. You can see it coming from the backside. As, as he released the ball, he got a hit inside on the legs. Really no one open on that throw. Very dangerous throw to throw that ball. Kind of just lofted that one up in the air. Second down and 10. Draw play with Moss. 11th carry of the game for Tyrone. Now it's time for our Aflac trivia question. Now, what was the last team to lose its opener and go on to win the AP National Championship? And uh, some of my friends out in Norman are liking to see this question. <laughs> right. Boy, that was, a, that was a big shocker, wasn't it? I guess the other thing is the impressive way that Notre Dame made its debut under Charlie Weiss. Third down here, Gary. Third and long, but I think Miami needs to be aggressive here. They're down 10 to nothing. They have to throw the ball downfield. From the shotgun. Intercepted. Picked off by Ernie Sims, their great linebacker. So tough to throw the ball over the middle. Kyle Wright is not accounting for all those great linebackers for Florida State. He's much better off throwing the ball out to the sideline. Crossing route across the field. He never finds number 34. Thinks he's got a freebie right there. And an interception on the play. So crowded. Look at Sim sneak back in the play and one hands it, cradles it, and makes the play. What a great play by Ernie Sims. Tough to find those guys. First down and 10, Leon Washington, the running back for Weatherford, going deep middle, and badly overthrew everybody, and uh, Chris Davis. Yeah, you wonder if Chris Davis broke his route off on that one, because Weatherford threw the ball where he wanted to, and Chris Davis didn't think he was going to be open, so he kind of broke into the middle of the field, which is what you can't do as a wide receiver. Nice try there by Florida State. Get the ball downfield, see if they can put cheap points on the board. Second down and 10. <laughs> On the top play with Washington. And he smacked at the 43. Let's check in with John Saunders, John. 
Brent, time now for the singular ABC Sports All-America Player of the Week. It's Wisconsin running back Brian Calhoun, a career best 258 yards and a school tying five touchdowns and 43 carries as Wisconsin beat Bowling Green. Don't forget, next week, text the word vote to 87654 on your singular phone for your ballot and a chance for a trip to the national championship. And John, he was uh, recruited by Colorado and uh, left amidst all those problems, a very highly recruited running back. Uh, that game produced well over 90 points between Bowling Green and Wisconsin and Madison throwback day. Lorenzo Booker on the field. And Weatherford threw way high and incomplete. The tight end was covered over there on that side. There was no chance for Matt Hinshaw, and uh, it is possible that Drew threw that one away when he saw the coverage. That he time, was pressured by Kareem Brown. Absolutely, right up the gut that time. Second level of Miami's defensive line, one of the backups. Miami plays eight deep on that front there, and Brown, number 99, got right into Weatherford's feet as he let the ball go. Deep for the Kings, number four, Kevin Hector. This one well short of Devin Hester, but he's been getting the bounce on it. And, uh, let go, let go, let go, let go. Down close to the 15-yard line down there. You can see where it's spotted right on the 15-yard uh, line. We're going to take a break. Kyle Wright, 3 of 9 for 37 yards with two costly interceptions. Favorite thing about being a linebacker is just being able to le legally try to hurt somebody. That's m that's my favorite thing. And uh, folks, he wears number 34. Ernie Sims does. And that was a number that was retired, worn by a great wide receiver, Ron Sellers. And Florida State went to Sellers and asked, "Hey, we'd like to use 34." And he said, "Sure, go ahead." Now, his father, Ernie Sims Sr., played for Florida State, and his mom, Alice Bennett, was a top-notch sprinter here at the university. And uh, he is some linebacker. And, and there's a brother. <laughs> there's a brother on the A running back. Yeah, a running back linebacker, both. First down and 10 for Kyle Wright. Play fake to Moss. Wright airing it out. And he ran right into him. That's a 15-yarder and a first down. It was no question about that the deep receiver was Centaurus Moss that's Santana's younger brother he's a senior from Miami's Carroll City High J.R. Bryant never turned around never tried to get contact with the football simply plowed right into it this is pretty obvious up here in the booth Florida State's corners do not match up they squat a lot and this should have been a touchdown had this ball been thrown on time Moss was about six to eight yards open and the ball was thrown late, way too late and behind Moss. But right now, the pressure point for Florida State is outside. Carter and Bryant are not matching up. That is gonna force Mickey Andrews to play more zone and more deep coverage. First down and 10 after the penalty. the workhorse Moss and it'll be second down and ten now. Remember now the earlier Affleck trivia question the last team to lose their season opener going to win the AP National Championship. Well folks back in 1983 Miami lost to Florida in Gainesville 28-3 and they went on under Howard Schnellenberger to win the AP National Championship. They went 11-1 and they beat Nebraska in the Orange Bowl 31 to 30. So it's second down now and 10. Moss has carried 12 times for 63 yards. High, and Olsen can't grab it. And again, it was a little bit high, but Olsen did have his hands on it that time. I thought he could have caught that ball. I thought he slightly misjudged this football and got off balance on the catch. Hey, let's take you back now remember it was 31 30 and Tom Osborne said we don't play the tie we'll <laughs> go for the win went for the two 
incomplete, and your buddy Bernie Kosar wins the championship. As a freshman, lost his opener, came back. Howard Stellenberger said after the game, we lost the game but found a quarterback, and he was right in Bernie Kosar. And Howard is now at Florida Atlantic University, putting that school's program together, getting more and more competitive down there. Wright's going to get forced to his left on the run. He'll take it out of bounds. Great coverage. Great zone coverage by Florida State that time. Nowhere to throw the ball. No angle at all for Kyle Wright. Forced him to just run out on that design sprint. You can see it. Zone coverage now. Florida State has all of their defensive backs. Eight of them. Three-man rush. Look at that. No angles to throw the ball at all. Kyle Wright is running to his left. He could never really throw back to his right to throw to those guys on that hash mark. So Brian Monroe hunting and Willie Reed, he too, not like Devin Hester, but he dangerous return magnet back there for the Knowles. Left foot of punt. Single foot, that's, that's a penalty. Devin Hester barreled into him and uh, he was pushed into him. That's what Devin Hester is saying, but It's still your job to stay out of the way. He got pushed in the back is what Devin Hester says. Watch this. Right side of the screen. See if you can see it. Oh, you're going to get called on that one. I'd say. You're going to get called on that one whether you got pushed or not. Here's Hester right there getting pushed, but he puts himself in a position to make that play. Now, if he gets pushed from behind, he might get away with that. Now, there's uh, they're huddling oh, here. Yeah. Let's oh, see yeah. if there's a different angle by one of these officials who said, I saw him pushed. We'll see what happens here. There's no doubt he this was pushed. This is a very, very good officiating crew. Jack Childress with uh, George Burton, Carl Logan, Tommy Giles, Daryl Harrison down here. Now, there was an additional flag, we are told, away from the ball. Number 26 of the kicking team that results in a 15-yard penalty. We also have a dead ball personal foul and an ejection for number oh man and that penalty is on Charlie Jones a young running back from Miami so this is some situation facing Coker and the Canes that's going to bring this ball across midfield and give Weatherford and the Knowles a short field they're going to put it down at the 40 yard line would you ever would think that Florida State is winning this game because of kicking game they are controlling the kicking game so far and I believe that 34 has been ejected we'll have Jack Aroot check on what happened time out College football on ABC Sports brought to you by Chevy, the new Chevrolets at American Revolution. Outback Steakhouse, no rules, just right. And Pacific Life, for insurance, annuities, and investments, choose Pacific Life, the power to help you succeed. There's a pretty neat statue of Bobby Bowden outside here. They renamed it Bobby Bowden Field at Doak Campbell Stadium in Tallahassee, Florida, the capital of the state of Florida. The governor. Jeb Bush among those in attendance tonight, and it is a record crowd on hand. 84,000 here watching this game. First down and 10. Booker trying to get the corner out of bounds. Well, a reminder that on Thursday night, Mick Jagger will open it up, and then we'll get going in earnest. Tom Brady and the Super Bowl champion New England Patriots they got Randy Moss and the Raiders guy. Mick Jagger still have eligibility left, uh, Brent? <laughs> He's got to be six-year senior now, doesn't he? <laughs> I think so. I think he is. <laughs> Second down. Booker, short of the first down. So let's check in now with John Saunders. John. 
Well, Brent, it's time for the Pontiac game-changing performance play of the week. TCU taking advantage of this fumble by Rhett Bomar to upset number seven Oklahoma as they would score a touchdown and win it 17 to 10. Don't forget to vote for your Pontiac game-changing performance at ESPN.com. Keyword, Pontiac. Brent, back to you. All right, John. So I imagine there's quarterback concerns down in Norman as they get ready to pick up the pieces after losing to TCU. TCU played very well. Weatherford under pressure and incomplete. Right, Miami it will be fourth down now as Miami was coming that time and Brandon Merriweather defended the play. And they weren't hiding it at all. There wasn't a safety more than three yards deep. They brought an all-out blitz. Florida State had a rollout call, the sprint pass, and uh, you can see Atkins right there was the guy who uh, was on the blitz that time, rushing from the defensive end, and is still down. That was a good call, I think, by Randy Shannon. Come after Weatherford. He's been gaining confidence. Get him before he gets started. We've had a couple of players on the, uh, on the Miami defense who have been injured. Uh, Pata, remember, 95 was shaken up. Special teams, they had uh, one of their defensive backs, uh, Anthony Reddick, uh, was also out of the game. So the injury toll is uh, starting to mount on the Canes here. Let's see what happened to Baraka Atkins. Right side of your screen here. Let's see it's a, oh, coming down from the left side. Let's see what happens. Can't really see it. It's kind of clipped. It's kind of taken on a low block, not a clip, but a below the waist block. And he's just going to kind of limp off. And that's his brother, who was a um, backup offensive lineman here at uh, at Florida State, a youngin. So it's unlikely that they'll be knocking that they'll be knocking helmets. Uh, he's a freshman from Sarasota, and someday he hopes to be the starting center here in Tallahassee. Tamika Atkins instead of Baraka. Go oh, back to punt is Chris Hall. He dropped 21 to 67 inside the 20. And they can't pull it off. Penalty flags are now flying. And the boy Florida State is pointing like it's on Miami again. Miami did a great job with the defense stays and snuffed it out. Signaling that this will result in a first down. Ernie Sims got the direct snap that time and didn't make it. The penalty was a dead ball foul after the change of team possession. Personal foul number two of the new offense. 15 yard penalty, first down Miami. The key thing was after the change of possession. So the fourth down, they had turned it over on downs, so Miami will keep the football. You can see it, the direct snap to Ernie Sims. Right there, number 34, he catches. He was supposed to go inside, really was forced to bounce outside, and the play really never had a chance after that. And again, it was dead ball foul after the play. Miami marches it off, but keeps the ball. So Beeson came up and uh, threw that illegal block. So the ball is brought back inside the 20. But Miami keeps possession. 8.40 to go here in the first half. Leading at 10 to nothing. Comes the end around with Moss. Steps out of bounds with a first down. So Centaurus Moss. Whips around on the end around, picking up the first down, and it's time for the Pacific Life game summary as the Seminoles have taken advantage of one of Kyle Wright's two interceptions in this game to score the lone touchdown. They tacked on a field goal, and they are up by 10 points in the game. Meanwhile, Miami has outgained Florida State in this game, 117 to 79. But that's not the important stat. 10 nothing is. Knowles lead it. Off a of play.
play fake buys time in underneath. This time, the big tight end Olsen hangs on and lumbers for a first down. 26 yards, and that's the Greg Olsen we were expecting to see. And that's the Miami offense when it is humming, really gives people fits. When they run the ball, and Miami has been effective running the ball, throw the ball outside to their playmakers, and then play action pass to the tight end. That's when Miami is effective, keeping you off balance, doing three different things. Moss, the running back, has rushed for 63 yards. He's alongside the quarterback. Low snap, inside handoff. Moss makes the most of it, as you could see from that great shot from behind him. There uh, certainly was not much daylight there. And uh, Jack, uh, get us up to date now on this injury toll here. Well, let's start with Anthony Reddick. Uh, Reddick has been removed, and it's questionable because he is complaining of a knee sprain. But good news for Branca Atkins. After John Uribe, the orthopedic surgeon for the University of Miami, checked him over, he gave him the thumbs up and the OK to return to action on defense. And Wright checking over the sideline. There we see uh, the youngster who's down over there. Reddick was hurt on a uh, special team play. Second down and nine. Straight back and now right. Nifty run for a first down. Yes, he paid a price. But he picked up the first down to the 34 for 11 yards. We have been told by the coaching staff repeatedly, a little more mobile than Brock Berlin. And certainly, I think we saw it in that play. Not more mobile, just flat out faster. You bet he's faster. But Kyler Hall, number 41, makes him pay for it. Nice read, nothing there. Go up the middle, and then maybe you might try to slide at this level because Kyler Hall just lays one on him. And it's going to be tough to play 12, 11, 12 games getting hit like that all the time. It's down for the Canes. It is stopped by the officials. Florida, Florida State took it to their last time out. 7-14 to go. That means we'll take a break. 10-0, though. Knowles leader, but Miami driving. You're watching the BCS Spotlight game presented by ADT. Florida State leading Miami 10-0. Eric Winston, the big left tackle, and the uh, Canes, though, are hoping to close out this drive. The ball just uh, inside Florida State's 35-yard line here. It is first down and 10. 7-14 remaining in the first half. Two turnovers by Kyle Wright. Two interceptions. And now Miami will use a timeout. So Miami wants to talk about it. Miami had an illegal formation. Eric Winston turned around and said, there's no tight end next to me. Well, Eric Winston, a great <laughs> leader, and we asked him about the Florida State defense, and here's what he said. First of all, they come off the ball extremely hard and extremely low. Then they, they locate the ball, and they don't stay blocked. And uh, that's what makes the Florida State and defense in general so hard is their linebackers are like that, their, their defense aligned about that, and that's why it's hard to run the ball against them. He is a senior from Midland, Texas, a converted tight end. He was the H-back in that classic national championship game against Ohio State, won by the Buckeyes in the second overtime. And had Ken Dorsey been given enough time on that last play, when Jim Trussell's Buckeyes blitzed off the linebacking spot, Winston was the intended target on that play. And you could see the difference, how much more efficient they were with him at left tackle. He's 6'7", 312 pounds, and Art Kehoe compares him to Bryant McKinney and Leon Searcy. Now, folks, that's pretty good company. Yeah, you know, he reminds me of Robert Gallery, the, of the big tackle from Iowa that was such a dominating player. Light on his feet, knows how to use his body in space, yet strong enough to stand up to punishment right at him. Mac Brown thought he had him recruited at Austin, but he had a lot of close relatives that were Aggies folks, and they said no chance, so he said, oh, to heck with it, and came on to Miami, and uh, the Kings are thankful for that. First down and 10 for Winston and Miami. Right pump fake, now goes long battle, touchdown! Moore grabs the ball, hangs on for a 34-yard scoring strike, and Kyle Wright's first Miami Hurricane touchdown. 
but it was a beautiful pump fake, and then Moore did the rest. Well, I gotta tell you here, I think Kyle Wright got away from one here. Kyle Hall, Kyler Hall, the safety, should have intercepted it. Watch number 41 come around, and Ryan Moore snatches it. That ball could have been picked off. The safety read it all the way and came across the play and made it. Ryan Moore, who had three drops last year, has made the play in this game. John Petty tacks on the extra point. Moore's size, six foot three. He was able to get up in the air, as you saw on that replay. He extended for Coach Coker, and the Canes bounce right back. Annette brings a huge smile. And I would say some relief to this coaching staff. Now you watch more with this size. Go to work on this replay. Battling all the way. It's illegal until that ball's there to stay right with him in the college game. He goes up in the air. Got it and falls in for the score. Nice play by Moore. Greg Ross right there. The first defender fell down. The free safety haul came all the way from the middle of the field. Misjudged the ball and Moore caught the ball at the top of the throw and made the field the play. You got to feel good for Moore, especially after those drops last year. Brenton he lost his job for Miami. Now he caught only one pass in last year's game against Florida State for 12 yards, and he came in as the uh, the go-to guy. guy. Yeah, absolutely. You know, he only had nine catches the whole year last year when he was supposed to be the breakout receiver for Miami. Kyle, sometimes you got to be fortunate. At that time, Kyle Wright was fortunate because that ball was thrown to the safety that should have made the play. Well, I want to go back on the point that you made earlier. They are attacking the corners Absolutely. of Florida State. And that was certainly very relevant there. Anton Smith, the uh, freshman, couldn't get a handle. He'll go out and he'll come out on the 20-yard uh, line. And, uh, Gerard Wass that time, the boundary corner just does not feel good in space. Jack? Well, Brent Gary, you're talking about the one pass that Ryan Moore caught last season in this game. He dropped three more, and he said that was the beginning of the downward spiral for his season last year. He told me he circled his calendar for this game since the end of last year's regular season, all through spring practice, all through fall ball. He said, I need one big play to a race last year. I think he got it. First down and 10 coming up for Drew Weatherford. It is now 10-7 as the Canes, again a year ago, came from behind in the fourth quarter of that game. Leon Washington to the 25. I think this is the first time in the game that there's ever really been any pressure on Drew Weatherford. With the score now 10-7, Kyle Wright has made some plays. Yes, he's made some mistakes, but now Weatherford has to kind of get off the mark. He's two for eight for nine yards in this football game. Nine yards passing for the Florida State quarterback. I don't think Miami believes they can win it with only nine yard passing this whole football game. And 96 for Kyle Wright. Yep. It's complete and short of the first down. This will be third and short. So this will bring up the power formation for Weatherford and the Knowles as Dakota Fagg makes his first catch of the game. And a uh, reminder, the Valvoline halftime show is coming up. So John Craig and Aaron, they're here. And they'll have as a guest former Hurricane star Michael Irvin. And I'm uh, sure that what he told Moore uh, paid off in that uh, touchdown uh, reception. We had him first, though. <laughs> right? He was on our show first. You know? <laughs> Wow, there you there go. There you are. This is as bad as it gets last year in college football. And Jeff Bowden told us that last year Florida State had 53 snaps of third and 10 plus. That's how you get 24% conversion. First down. The Knowles with 620 to work with here. Come back with Washington to the 30-yard line. Second down and long. In talking to Coach Bowden, he said, you know, I'm not going to automatically throw on second and long. And this was Jeff Bowden, the offensive coordinator, who said, I don't want to leave him in third and long. This is his first time starting. He said, don't be surprised. The crowd may get a little restless, but I may come back with a running play on second down to give us a more makeable third down situation. The word he used is he has to have patience with Weatherford in this offense in this football game. Behind him. 
and incomplete. And now it is third and wide long. open too. Our Pacific Life game summary here. One of the best rivalries in uh, college football. The interception. Kyle Wright through two. That was off the deflected pass, and Hall would set up the Coleman touchdown. Then it was more. Miami on the board. Third down and ten. They came around the corners on him that time, and he had no chance, as again, it was Merriweather. Yeah, Miami was in their nickel package that time. Merriweather, a safety, was lined up as a linebacker type. He came from the outside and hit that ball before it was thrown. Again, Miami, do not fear Florida State's wide receivers at all. They are right up in their face, and they're blitzing every play. Going to force Florida State to throw the ball deep before this game's over. Kevin Hester looking for a little coaching advice. Five and a half minutes. Miami with a chance to uh, seize the lead. Ball under some pressure. Hester fumbles and recovered it. Devin Hester is not having a Hester-like game here tonight. Let me tell you, folks. Didn't he have a conversation with Deion Sanders? I think Deion might have might give him a little bad information or something like that. Deion said he was helping him, but you know he was trying to help FSU. Well, these great views here from Tallahassee being provided by the Outback Steakhouse Airship, the Bloomin' Onion. Captain Tom Whitten is up at the controls and. This is a gorgeous night here above the Doak Campbell Stadium, Tallahassee, Florida. Record crowd on hand for one of the best rivalries in college football, and it will come right down to the second half, just like it normally does between these two. 5-28. Moss has been the workhorse. Squirts out for about three yards before Buster Davis, the middle linebacker, makes the stop on him. But these linebackers for Florida State, I mean, they just, they don't miss tackles. They're great blitzers. They're tremendous in pass coverage. They don't bust assignments. They come up and pass rush from the outside as a defensive end. They are a great package. Leggett, the speedster, is out to the left for right. One-on-one -on -one with the corner. No time. Mickey Andrews just did not give right any time that time with the defensive call. Wimbley, number 95, one of those in there, along with Flew Ellen. So the line collapsing on right. Wimbley, Flew Ellen, watch these guys get off. Come in low. You see Sims to the outside and then making a play. Opportunities to throw the ball downfield, but when you play Florida State, you have to block them before you get a chance to throw against them. Tyrone Moss is out. Hill stays in. So the fullback, sort of a wing look off to the quarterback's right on third and long. Around the corner, got it off, and Leggett can't hang on. Lance Leggett, the speedster, the one they call Spider-Man, let one get right through his web that time. You cannot throw a ball better than that one. That's the best throw of the game for Kyle Wright. Watch him step into it, looks downfield, and rips a square in. Right on the hands. You can't throw it better than that. Leggett has to make a play for his football team. That's two drop balls for Kyle Wright in this football game by Olsen and now Leggett. Both of them were on third down, perfect, we perfect should point throws. out. Both of them were, would have resulted in first downs. Now Leon Washington checks in as the return man for Florida State. Runs up to the 28. And reaches back close to the 30-yard line. Three fifty to go here in the uh, first half, and uh, we do we do have a an announcement to make uh, because of the um, the devastation of the tragedy, as you know, the New Orleans Saints game has been moved to Giant Stadium in the Meadowlands. Well, it is going to be played on a Monday night, 
and it will start on ABC at 730 Eastern time and at 9 Eastern when Dallas and Washington come on that game will switch over to ESPN and of course they will also use the opportunity to uh, fundraise for the devastation that has gone on along the, uh, the Gulf Coast caught inside the 40 yard line as Marcus Maxey intercepts it for Miami. First down play. They tried to get the ball deep, but it was a three on two coverage over there. You see Dickey, the quarterback coach, said, you still got to read it. You have to know if you got one on one before you throw it out there. And Maxey making the play to the outside. Fastest cane on the team. Devin Hester said that if you mention that, he would challenge him to a foot race. First down and 10 for Kyle Wright. Switches hands with the ball. Moss punishing Florida State's defense to the 40-yard line. And Tyrone Moss could wind up with a 100-yard first half. He's already at 88 yards here tonight. What a difference 14 pounds makes. You know, Brent, he was called out by Larry Coker at the ACC meeting. He basically said, we're not playing any overweight running backs anymore at Miami. Tyrone Moss heard it, got in shape, and you could see the difference tonight. Here he comes again, stumbling to the 35-yard line as we check in with Jack. So how did Tyrone Moss lose all that weight? Conventionally, yeah, he did the right thing. Stopped eating late at night, swore off of the junk food. But the thing that he said made the difference, Brent, he took up boxing. Want to go a couple of rounds? You know, Jack, really interesting. I, I simply think boxers are some of the most underrated athletes in the world. Now, you folks out there are laughing right now. I'll tell you what you do. Take an egg timer, go into the kitchen, a three-minute egg timer. I want you to turn it around. I want you to dance around the floor and then throw punches and imagine somebody coming at you. You tell me that they're not athletes. This will bring up third down now. Stopped in the middle. It is 10-7 foot. Gary, what's your, uh, what's your feeling about this uh, football game? What are we seeing here in the first a, a, a half? A little sloppy. Both quarterbacks are making good plays. You can tell they're highly recruited and sloppy kind of young plays. The defenses are so dominating. If you do make a mistake, you pay dearly for every mistake. And as I predicted, the offensive line and defensive line is going to determine it. The pressure on the quarterback has been intense all game. Third down and four for Kyle Wright in the Canes. And penalty flags. The uh, play clock running down. Jack Childress taking a look at it. We have a dead ball foul. Illegal substitution. The offense has 12 players in formation. That's a five yard Well, we got a moment here as they uh, march it off. Let's, uh, let's go to John. Brand standing by coming up on the Valvoline halftime show. My partner here will break down the first half. Well, Miami's shown that they can throw the ball deep. I'll show you at halftime kind of what they should be doing and what's really open in the Miami offense. And guys, neither team's been able really to protect the pass. We'll talk about some of the adjustments they need to make to give those guys a chance back there. Plus, we'll be joined by the playmaker, Michael Irvin, to break down the first half. Brent, back right, to you. John, thank you. Third down and long for Kyle Wright and the Canes. the 44-yard line, Cameron Wimbley again, the defensive end from Wichita, Kansas. That time, Florida State got a sack with a three-man rush. They bluffed the four-man rush with A.J. Nicholson, but watch Nicholson come in and then back out over here. Three-man rush, nobody to throw to. You come up inside, decent protection, but Wright did not feel confident in his read to throw the ball. Nothing there, he takes the sack. Washington back deep. Standing on the Knowles 10-yard line. Here's Monroe, the punter. Leon's going to let it go into the end zone. They'll come out on the 20-yard line with 44 seconds to go. Up 10-7, having just come off an interception. 
with a passing game that's only three of 12 carry would you expect that Bobby Bowden would just run the time out now and take it on into the intermission here I would I might try a screen or a draw or something very simple but uh, I think 10-7 uh, considering his quarterback has been somewhat shaky in this football game I think he has to go in and say listen we won the kicking game we're doing well rushing the passer let's go in with the lead be devastating to make a mistake at your end of the field right now well Miami really is dominating the game except on the scoreboard they have outgained Florida State 200 yards to 89 here penalty flag flying on this play and a Booker cleaning up the final seconds here of the uh, of the first half coach Bowden and the uh, Knowles trying not to expose themselves to another mistake but the one thing that the Bowdens have to correct along with Weatherford they've got to find some semblance of a passing game you're not going to hold Miami nope. off nope. with what we've seen because Miami made many many mistakes that gave Florida State an opportunity well, both, such as interceptions both quarterbacks have done some good things Drew Rutherford has struggled real mightily it seems to me and the main reason is he doesn't have great receivers to the outside with a lot of experience players on the offensive line of scrimmage five yard penalty repeat the down Miami's corners feel comfortable playing man to man and force him into the tough throw whereas Florida State's corners are very shaky to the outside forcing Mickey Andrews to help with the safety now here's a tough question do you stick with the youngster like Drew Weatherford or do you give Xavier Lee who was the other quarterback candidate and a youngster untested raw would I, you give him a chance I, I would go with Weatherford a little longer but I would not be afraid to put Xavier Lee into the football game as a changeup on first and 15 here comes Booker sprinting to the outside and uh, they get to stop the clock by forcing him out of bounds with 16 seconds over there and Maxi uh, doing the job your impression of the two defenses now oh just about what we expected uh, both inside do not have a lot of bulk inside so you can run the ball inside Florida State again not a lot of experience in the secondary Miami's speed in the secondary is superior I think the only thing that surprised me is that Miami has been betrayed a bit by its special team play. Right, that has uh, hurt them the tonight. most. They've missed, a couple, them most. missed a couple of field goals. Yep. Uh, one was a long one for Petty. Could but have been worse, too, with absolutely. the Hester fumble. But, of course, they got the interception right after that, That's Jerry, true. and then he went back down and scored. So that was kind of a wash over there when instant replay turned that around, I thought, because of that. we got a timeout now with nine seconds uh, left here. And they're going to let the final seconds tick away. I think the officials had stopped it, though, and I still see... Uh, well, I think Miami took a timeout. That's what I thought. Yes, they did. Miami's not going anyplace. Absolutely. Miami now, now would like now, to... If you're a Miami player, you're saying, look at them. They're running away from Absolutely. us. Absolutely. I mean, that's exactly what youngsters say it's to each other. Great strategy They're by bring Larry. It back. Now, here come the Knowles all the way out of the tunnel. And Coker says, no, I'm not going to let you off the hook. But, well, think about the strategy for Miami. It's third down and medium. They could get a quick play, stop it, and call another timeout and force a punt and go for the block punt or give Devin Hester a chance to run one back. So I think it was a good strategy by Coker here to use his timeouts wisely here and force the young quarterback to make a play. Now, on third down, Gary, what kind of a play should Jeff Bowden come up with here he to should, eat this away? He should try to run the ball to the sideline, but I don't know, nine seconds is a long time. I'm sure Miami, if they stop him short of the first down, will get a timeout with, without the clock running out here in half. Who was your player of the first half? We saw them. Well, that's that, a good obviously, one. Uh, Brian Moore, I guess, he made the play of the first half. Yeah, that was a great catch. And, and you know, time. Moss, Booker, and Washington has been as advertised, I mm -hmm. think, the running backs. So here we are now with nine seconds to go. Florida State leading Miami 10 7. She just joined us. Florida State put 10 points on the board, and they're just hanging on for their life here. And uh, they want to go to that clubhouse and uh, talk about what they can do about this passing game again three of 12 Weatherford is for 14 yards one interception you want right five at 13 for 96 Garrett. the old Bobby would have thrown the ball down the field 50 yards <laughs> or is that the young Bobby whatever way it goes running to daylight Fumble. Fumble. Miami's got it but time runs out almost as the fumble 
was recovered by Merriweather, who had a very strong first half. Larry Coker is standing by with Jack Aru. Jack? Well, Coach, how do you rate that one? Is it what you expected in the first half in this well, game? Well, you never know what to expect the Florida State-Miami game, but I tell you, you know, I feel fortunate to be in the game with the turnovers we've had and some of the foolish penalties and the drop passes. You know, we're, we're right in this thing, and uh, we just got to correct the errors and to get back on track and, and play hard second half and not make the mistakes. Thanks, Coach. Uh, thanks, Coach. So there we have it. Miami trailing. It's 10-7, and we'll go to John, Craig, and Aaron. John. Brent, thanks a lot. Remember last year, this was a 10-0 game at one point for Florida State as well. But at the start of tonight's game, the focus on the two young quarterbacks. Evaluate them. And the coaching staff have to decide right now, what do I do? Do I stick with these quarterbacks? I get the sense that Kyle Wright has really settled down. He's in a group. The offensive line's protecting him. For Florida State, I'd stick with Drew Weatherford. Don't change anything. Now he has a half under his belt, so maybe he's a little bit more calm and composed. Guys, we talked about one of the key matchups. is going to be the front seven of Miami against Florida State's running game. Right now, Florida State able to run the ball, but only a little over 100 yards. I think the Miami's defense is playing tough. All right, coming up, the Valvoline Halftime Show. You're watching college football on ABC Sports Championship Television. With Gary Danielson and Jack Arrude, Brett Musburger back in Tallahassee. Low scoring and close. And uh, Gary, what's out of whack about this game? Well, since the kicking game and special teams have meant so much in this series, look at this. Florida State doesn't have it statistically, but they're winning the kicking game. Bobby Bowden will take that. But interestingly, Brent, I think it's Florida State with the lead that is going to have to make the next adjustment. It seems to me that Miami has kind of found their footing here. They're getting better quarterback play, better play from the wide receivers. I think Florida State must change. Drew Weatherford and the Seminoles badly need to find a go-to receiver, if yeah, you will. I, I really think so. Whether they bring on the young freshman and try something different, Miami is crowding the receivers and forcing, forcing Weatherford to pull the ball down and wait, and then that pass rush is getting him. All right, let's go down to the field now to Jack Aru. Well, Brent, at halftime in the locker room, the one thing that Coach Bowden reminded all of his players is the game one year ago where they had the lead until the final handful of minutes. I asked him on the way out, how long would he stay with Drew Weatherford at quarterback? He said, and this is a quote, Jack, a little bit longer. I asked him, are you going to make a change? He said, I might have to. Florida State will return the second half kickoff. So John Petty trots on to the field here for the Canes, who trail it by three points. And there you see the struggles of the passing game right now for Florida State. Only three of 12 for Coach Bobby Bowden and his staff. Something he knows he has to correct here. And Gary, nothing would give him a lift like a, like a big return. Yeah, maybe somebody else making a play. You know, that would be nice. But Miami's speed, there's not a lot of special team plays against Miami. And he'll come out on the 20-yard uh, line. Well, we are joined tonight by the uh, governor of the state of Florida, Jeb Bush. A pleasure to have him with us. And, of course, our friends along the Gulf Coast have just been decimated by the by the hurricane of last week. But but Governor, the state of Florida was really there. I want you to tell the folks the manpower and what this state has done for those folks along the Gulf. Well, we were preparing for the storm, so we had resources that we could bring uh, to the to the region very quickly. And and within four or five days, we had 2,800 people on the ground doing search and rescue, law enforcement, sheltering, and a lot of other things. And I'm proud of what we've done but our heart goes out to those folks and it's really payback time because we had four hurricanes last year hang on with me here governors we watch uh, first down for Weatherford and the Knowles incomplete now as so many people probably don't know around the country we're not even in the height of the hurricane season no, with all the manpower that you've poured along the Gulf what about the state of Florida and, and what would you do if something came up out of there, out of the Caribbean in a hurry on us? Well, I watch the Weather Channel a lot, Brent, so um, <laughs> so far so good in terms of the next uh, few days, next week perhaps. But we're, we're focused on that. We've, it's a big state. We have lots of resources, and uh, we're going to make sure the Floridians come first. That's our responsibility. Second down and 10 here for Weatherford and the Knowles. 
And now it will be third and ten. And finally, uh, Governor, a record crowd tonight, and they, they were collecting money uh, for the victims and the refugees, if you will, that we now have all up and down to go. It, it's really so heartwarming to see how people are pouring out. Now. It is. I mean, I put uh, 20 bucks as I came into the game, and a lot of other people were doing the same. I appreciate Florida State doing that. And they expect to raise a million dollars from this game alone. So hats off to all the, all the fans. Governor, uh, we want to remind everybody that the American Red Cross is, of course, collecting funds. For those of you that want to help, dial this number right now, 1-800-HELP-NOW. If you want to go to the Internet on the web, www.redcross.org, but open up your wallets, help out. As America is, we're reaching out across the country and help those poor people down along the Gulf. Governor, I want to thank you very much. I know you enjoyed the first half. Now, are you changing sides, Florida State one side and Miami the other? I mean, you got voters in Dade as well as up there, Leon. I do. I, you know, I'm in my second term, so I can say that I'm a Canes <laughs> fan, even in even at FSU territory here. Okay. All right, Governor. Thanks for being with us. Take care. All right. So now on Monday night, a reminder that both the New Orleans Saints and the Giants, along with the Washington Redskins and the Dallas Cowboys, will be on network television. The Saints and the Giants will start on ABC at 7.30 on the 19th and then move to ESPN at 9 o'clock when the Redskins and the Cowboys take the air at 9 Eastern time. And, of course, there will be a fundraiser uh, for the Gulf Coast victims along with those two football games as the NFL has already opened up its arms to the tune of a million dollars. Here comes the... Third down play here, Gary, for the Knowles. Three, two straight pass plays, nothing happened, not even close. Booker is loose, first down. Booker has been able to catch the short pass and be a lifesaver for this Florida State team. Watch Booker right there. He's going to come in, turn around, slip screen. Miami lets Booker catch the ball in some space. And this guy, like a, a la Reggie Bush, that's a Reggie Bush type play, is able to make a huge first down for Florida State. 23 yard gain, and it's a uh, first down. Leon Washington, now the running back, battles his way back close to the line of scrimmage. There is no belief in Miami that Drew Weatherford can throw to one of his receivers to the outside and hurt him. And until he proves it, Miami is going to believe that. Florida State and Jeff Bowden came out, to their credit, I guess, trying to prove they could do it. But Weatherford threw high and into the ground and did not do it. They got away with another slip screen. Three of the four completions by Drew Weatherford has gone to the running back. an empty backfield. Three step, high, incomplete, and it's third down. Our Pacific Life game summary stats from the first half of these game, and of course, uh, many of these uh, numbers we've already gone over with you. You can see that the Canes with 204 total yards to the Knowles 115. We did have nine penalties in the game and for at, 99 yards. Look, and look at, at that third, third down, down at the bottom. Absolutely. That's when you have young quarterbacks not being able to make plays on third down at the quarterback's down. And when you're young, that's very difficult to do. Here he is with another one. Incomplete. The intended receiver, Leon Washington. And McIntosh, the linebacker, defending on that play. Well, that one was put on the money. I don't know if Leon Washington would have got a first down on that one, but that was right there, and Leon slapped his hand saying, I need to help the guy out on that one. He did not make the catch. Looks like they're going to take Devin Hester off the field right now. So Devin Hester went out to return this punt and left, and he's replaced by Ryan Moore. Punt is out of bounds. The uh, side judge will come up and mark it. He's walking all the way past the 25-yard line right now. They mark it on the 26. 
So coming up, we'll see Kyle Wright. He was impressive late in the first half. Can he keep it going? 1,500 red-blooded Americans just decided to apply to Florida State. <laughs> Here we go now, Kyle Wright. First down and 10 coming out from the 26-yard line. Moss steps to the 28-yard line. Buster Davis, the linebacker from Daytona Beach, is there. You know, you look down on the field and uh, Brian Mobleson and George Hill, the spotter in the stats man, just said before this game started, Gary, look at all this speed that we have assembled in this game. And it is so true when Florida State plays Miami. Yeah, it, it, great it speed down here really in the is. state. In fact, the body types, we were talking at halftime, that the body types of the players are very similar. It's very difficult to tell the difference between defensive tackles, linebackers, and safeties in this football game. Second down and eight for right. Protection holes. Dumps in underneath to the fullback. Quatrin Hill, the I senior, did not get the first down. Tyrone Moss is really limping out there. He's going to have to come out of the football game. They're going to have to put in Darren Thomas or put in uh, a, 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 another wide receiver and go in ace formation. But uh, Moss was really limping after the carry on first down. They lost the running back who was ejected, Jones, in the first half. Are battling one of the gunners down there. So they're a little bit shorthanded. They do have Darren Thomas, a redshirt freshman, that they could try. But Moss has been a load in this game. 96 yards and right on third down, goes back into the gun. He's in trouble, throws it away, and Miami is forced to punt. So the protection broke down. And Wright could not find an open. Did you find anybody open in the well, secondary no, Grant, game? I don't, I don't think there was, really. It was an overloaded defense to the wide side of the field. Three-man rush. As you look at Moss right there, I don't know if it was an ankle or a hamstring or whatever that's been bothering him, but he's on the sideline. But there was nothing to, and no one to throw to for Kyle Wright. Last year in Miami, don't I remember a cramping problem It was uh, Cromarty, and it was a huge cramping problem at the end of the game. Cromarty comes out of the game, and that's when... Florida State gave up those two big plays to Miami. They went after Jack Hunt. Florida State blocks it. It'll be their fall inside the five-yard line as the nose block Monroe's punt. Coming off, right up the gut at that time, lays out. Timmons right there, gets at the linebacker. And special teams again going to Florida State in this football game. The out of whack. The out of whack stack. You were, you were all over it. The out of whack stat still in whack, or out of whack, one of the two. You can it see it. fourth down, so it'll be their ball inside the five-yard line after Timmons blocked it. Wouldn't have made any difference who recovers Absolutely. it back there. It's going to be their ball, first down and goal. Now let's see. Remember, they overloaded with two fullbacks, and they used the fullback to score in the first half. Coleman and Dean were both in the Bulldog formation, and uh, Tavares Gooden, one of their linebackers, was shaken up on the play and is uh, being helped off the field. So we're at the bottom of the hour. Florida State leading it by three because of an interception. And now they will try to take advantage of a block punt and a first and goal inside the five. Great coaching by Florida State there that time, Brent. The rush was brought on the left side. The defense is right side because Miami has a left-footed punter. It's a little closer to that block point. And Timmons, a very good-sized linebacker, goes about 6'3", ends up getting his hand on it. Well, this is a very short red zone yeah. here. Yes. I mean, this is inside the five-yard line. I'll tell you what okay. this would be. If they don't score, it would be an embarrassing zone I, I for Florida say, State. Exactly. Unsportsmanlike, number three from Florida State. 
There was a dead ball, personal foul, number three, Florida State. Those fouls occurred during a dead ball period prior to any reporting. Therefore, they offset. The down in the distance is unaffected. First down. The Knowles with the jumbo backfield. Coleman and Dean, along with Leon Washington and Drew Weatherford. Ball is just outside the one yard line. Here's the fullback again, and this time the Canes were ready. They were not surprised as Glenn Cook. Oh, that's a great run by Coleman. I think everybody thought the play was over. He kept spinning and spinning and spinning and almost fell back. Fischl's called his progress down back right there. So it was a great attack into the backfield by the Miami defense, slipping that ball, but Glenn Cook makes that play. Second down and goal inside the five. Again the fullback, and again he has jumped. And now it goes third down. The crowd grows a little bit restless at the middle. Gary, do you like attacking the middle twice on first and second well, and not getting outside with it, something It worked there? for him on the last touchdown, and it looks to me like Jeff Bowden tried to fool him twice. This time, and neither time did it work at all. I'll tell you what, when I got Washington back there, Leon Washington, as strong as he is, I got to let him hit off tack. Well, I thought that their most impressive runner down here earlier was Booker. Absolutely. I Booker know the fullback scored, but, but now they changed the formation. The <laughs> they go to wide receivers. And there's the whistle. Miami's uh, got Miami 10 men on the field. Had called a timeout, right? Ten. Because they've got only 10 on the field. Yep. So Miami will use one of its second half timeouts. When we come back, you'll see if the Knowles can finally score on third down. College football on ABC Sports brought to you by Cadillac and the all-new STS Breakthrough. Taco Bell, think outside the bun. And Allstate, are you in good hands? Well, the Knowles would like to find some good hands, and they're going to spread the field there, but suddenly it's third down and goal. Booker watching from the sidelines. They won't get there. It's fourth down and goal. So three times inside the five-yard line, the Canes stuff the running game of Florida State. John Beeson jumps on that, and now they will attempt a field goal. That's a Gary Sismesha. And, uh, Gary, what's your feeling about that sequence inside the five? That's a big embarrassment for the Florida State offense. There's no doubt about that. You got the ball first and goal. Three plays, and you lose three yards. Whistle before the kick. So they'll sort it out here. The only thing that could top it is to miss the field goal. Prior to the snap, 77 of the offense. Ball start. Five-yard penalty, and it's still fourth down. So they are back, says Mesha, up five yards, and the, uh, the kicker from Bradenton, Florida, nearby, down there by Sarasota, south of Tampa. He'll get ready to do it all over again, and this will be a 26-yard attempt. All the punter will put it down for him. Oh, mercy. And it tops it off. A missed field goal. Where have we heard that before in this rivalry? Let's check out the mechanics. Decent snap. Ball tilted towards the holder. That's exactly the way you want it. He just pulls it too far left. So the blocked punt gives the Seminoles a first and goal inside the five. Three runs and a missed field goal later. 
and Miami has the ball coming out on their own 20-yard line. Long reach now to Moss. Picks up a yard. And remember, he's been... Uh, Battling Jack Root, what did you uh, what did you find out down below? What what is the problem with uh, Tyrone Moss? Brent, whenever you have first games and it's in the heat, even though it's a little cool tonight, players tend to cramp up. That's exactly what has happened to Tyrone Moss. But here, I mean, here's the problem, Brent. What you can need the cramp out, but the cramps will return because you've not been hydrated properly. So we'll have to watch him the rest of the game. Fake. Sliding catch for the reception, the tight end Olsen giving the Canes a first down. So after dropping a couple early on, one especially important in this game, Olsen has made a couple of grabs and that a nifty sliding catch for 16 yards. Nice call by Dan Warner there that time. Coming to the short side of the field, he put the fullback in the flat, the tight end about 12 yards down, made an easy pitch and catch for Kyle Wright. Uh, Kyle almost pulled the string on it, but Olsen saved them. Here comes one of the youngsters from New Orleans into the lineup for Miami. It's a timeout being called by the Canes. Darren Thomas, a 5'9", 190-pound redshirt freshman from East St. John High School in uh, Louisiana. He will be the running back right there. We got a pull for a young man like that, and we'll check him out when we come back. The Seminoles leading the Hurricanes by three, and Devin Hester checks into the backfield for Miami. He's going to make a problem with Tyrone Moss. They'll empty him out like they frequently do. He winds up being a slot receiver coming back to the quarterback. He's going to throw downfield, and his tight end was there at the 41-yard line. That was a great design play that time by Miami. They brought in Devin Hester and stopped him like they were going to throw a quick screen to him. And then they took the tight end right down the seams. You see the fake right there by Kyle Wright. Then he sees the tight end, throws the ball nice, right in the seam, perfect throw, and Olsen makes sure and makes the catch. That was beautifully designed and wonderfully executed. 22 yards for the game. Kyle Wright. Here tonight now, he's thrown already for 135. He's 8 of 17. Runs the toss with Devin Hester. Trying to get to the corner with that great speed of his. There's a penalty flag thrown on the play. Devin Hester is uh, run out of bounds. You know, Gary, I, I would think that down in Miami, there's, there's a lot of Kane fans right now that are saying, hey, you know what? This Kyle Wright is going to be okay. There's we no kind of like what we see. He's got a pretty good arm. There's no doubt. I mean, this is his first game, and this is in Citadel he's playing at home. I mean, he's playing Florida State that make good quarterbacks look shaky. He has got potential. There's a reason why you're the number one recruit in the country. I mean, those are the type of guys like Chad Henney, you know, Brian Brom. That's what Kyle Wright, people think of him as his talent level. He does not look to us like someone making his first ever start. He, and it is not easy. No, in no, absolutely not. I mean, he's making mistakes. But he's showing that he has potential, and I think ultimately you can see what type of player he's going to be. There's no block here. Coming from the left, you see. Oh, I see that. One of those. Sometimes those plays are called when the defensive back Nicholson might have turned on that block. The running back was behind him. That's a questionable call, I think. with the play and knocked it out. We'll take another look at this from the naked eye. We did not see the infraction that time. Ball was slightly underthrown. Ross is catching up. Boy, I don't know about that one. I didn't Looked either, to Gary. me like he came right across. He, you know, his back hand yeah. was on the side that the official, the back judge saw, and that's how he makes, let's see if his left hand goes there. He got there just before the ball did. I think that's a good call. I think that's a good call. 
Yeah, the official was standing yep, right there. Absolutely. He had, a, he, had a, he had a great angle on it. You know what, what else happened on that play, Brent, with the play action pass? Chris Olsen was wide open again over the middle of the field. I'm sure the offensive staff from Miami saw that. It looks like now, since Miami is moving the ball, the linebackers are really becoming downhill for Florida State, meaning they're really attacking the run game, and Olsen's becoming wide open on play action passes. Thomas is in at the tailback. This is first down and 10 after the penalty oh, marks. Oh, surprise. That's the last time out. They have exhausted their timeouts with 8.45 to go in the third quarter. So we'll take a break with FSU up by three. Interesting the contrast on the sidelines here for Florida State. It is just like all the wind has been taken out of their sails, Brent, despite the fact that they're leading, hands on the hips, just expecting the unexpected. They kind of feel like maybe, I don't know, I get the sense it was almost like it was in Miami a year ago. You go over to the Miami sidelines, though, even though they missed, they missed that field goal by Florida State, even though they just incurred that penalty, Miami has really got some bounce in their step. Watch out. Well, here they are, Jack, inside the 40-yard line with a uh, first and 10. Darren Thomas. Trying to give Moss a badly needed rest here. Checking with his fullback, you can see. They'll try him. And the nose jump on him. It'll be second down and long. Well, we've talked about Saturday night. Let's check in on our IBM Star Watch. No bigger star in college football right now than Vince Young, the great quarterback for the Longhorns. He opened up the season 13 to 17 for 173, ratio of 3 and 1, ran for nearly 50 yards. They put 60 points up, and we will see Vince and the Longhorns, their first ever, first ever meeting against Ohio State Saturday night from the Horseshoe in Columbus. 8 p.m. Eastern on ABC. Here it is, second down. Miami trailing our rival Florida State, using a backup running back as Tyrone Moss has been cramping up. And the Knowles put the Canes in the third and long. My question here is, Gary, are you surprised that the Canes didn't put it up in that situation? Well, they were expecting a blitz, and they tried to pop one with Darren Thomas that time. But they're going to be forced to try to pick it up now. They do have the win. They're still they probably are in close to field goal range. It would be more than a 50 yarder, but they could move the ball forward and try a field goal. I don't know if they want to risk a field goal. They're 0 for 2 already. <laughs> but both they against them. They right to try to get some yards here. Beautiful play by Ross. Broke it up brilliantly diving in. You could hear it. Whack. Gerald Ross made the drive. Ross made the play that time. That ball was thrown late into the inside of the receiver. That's why Ross made the play. Right went to the right player, but behind the receiver. You see how he had to reach back for that ball? And that gave Ross an opportunity to make an outstanding play. Now they're going to play field position here and, and not even attempt a field goal. They'll try to get it down inside the 20 yard line. The last punt was blocked. There's nobody back deep here. And it's down beautifully inside the five yard line. Remember a short time ago the Knowles had a first and goal from just outside the one yard line and now we have moved all the way inside their five yard line where they will take it over. So very good coaching decision to play field position in that situation. Now Thursday night the Sunday NFL countdown of the season opener. So Chris Berman and the gang they'll come along and they'll set the stage for Mick Jagger. And then we'll get to that game of course the Raiders and the Patriots and uh, man, what about what about Randy Moss is he going to light it up with the uh, Raiders Gary? He always does. Gary Collins throws a great ball. He should be able to throw it to him and Porter on the other side. How about that Brent? 95 yards in field position change with that drive and punt and down by Miami. They throw on first down to Washington. 
And if I'm a Seminole fan, I'm saying, where was something like that when it was first and goal? Well, it's a little easier coming out, but you're <laughs> right. A little more imagination. That is the slip screen. It's basically been the whole pass offense for Florida State tonight. Leon Washington, the offensive MVP. And that's a pretty good motto, isn't it, folks? You know, now, look, post-cooking competition between two. Now, is that great? Because he gets to taste all the food. Huh? How's is that, that for with, a Is that job? with a microwave or what? <laughs> Probably. First down and 10. Reach on the uh, handoff, and uh, Miami read that that long reach play, and uh, Kareem Brown out of uh, Miami just uh, ate it up. We check in with John. Well, Brent, it's time for the Taco Bell update. Trailing 24-22, UNLV goes for the two-point conversion to tie, but they wind up getting stopped and come up short by two to New Mexico. 24-22 is the final. That's your Taco Bell update. Back to Brent and Gary. All right, and uh, Gary, of course, the, um, the Utah system being used at UNLV right now. Trying to go to that. Helps to have Alex Smith. Chris Leak, second down. Oh, Phillips on the blitz and intercepted. But credit number one, Kenny Phillips, that sensational freshman defensive back, came off the right side and lowered the boom. Now they're waving it off he didn't for a the moment. Yeah. They had given them an interception, but it's going to be incomplete. But wait till you see. And folks, what a future. One of the great safeties of the mold is Sean Taylor. Ed Reed coming in for the left side, collapsed on him. And it looked like he caught the ball from there, but from behind, the ball must have bounced underneath his body. Play is not being stopped. It has been reviewed upstairs. going on down in that pit area right now. Big number 50, Rocky McIntosh, along with Orion Harris. Miami just is so confident in stopping this Florida State offense. Five passes have been completed tonight. Four of them on a slip screen to the running back. One, a five-yard pass to a wide receiver. Miami is completely stopping the passing game for Florida State. Ryan Moore, again back deep and uh, slow to come to the uh, the field, the punting team for Florida State. Remember, Jack uh, reported that they'd lost a spring in their step. And this is going to give Miami real good field position. Let's see where they finally mark this punt down. They're walking on the other side of the 40, right at the 40. Now here's the great aerial shots tonight here on this record setting crowd. Tallahassee, courtesy of our friends at Outback Steakhouse, proud sponsor of the Outback Bowl uh, nearby Tampa. The Outback Steakhouse airship, the Bloomin' Onion One, providing aerial coverage for sporting events across the country. Only 24 yards on that punt. And this record setting crowd of 84,000 plus. Time once again to inspire the defense here. Kyle White on the night is thrown for 134 yards. So a fake and he carries it out. Beautifully. Out of bounds. At the 35. He stood there forever. Watch Kyle Wright, folks. First start. He doesn't look like a young in this one. This is pretty impressive on who he outruns to the sideline. Watch as he wanted to go down. Florida State smelled it. Now he turns a corner and he's got A.J. Nicholson, number 34, chasing him. And watch Wright get around the corner that time. Ernie nice. Sims giving chase. Oh, was it Ernie Sims? I'm sorry. Yes, Second Ernie Sims. Down Very and fast line. Four. They take by Wright in trouble. At the 42. Taken down by Marcelo Church, the linebacker from St. Petersburg. They go seven deep at linebacker, and there's always a fresh one coming in that can run. You know, we see one stat starting to gang up on Miami, though. They are 0 of 9 on third down, and they've got one coming up right now. 
their 10th third down of the night and they haven't been able to convert a single one yet. Let's see if they can get that deep crossing route that they dropped earlier in the game. Or Wilson gets a release off that line. Kyle Wright's in trouble. Looking to his backside. Nowhere to go. There were no's everywhere. Tony Carter, the five foot nine corner from Jacksonville, who replaces Antonio Cromarty, making the stop for Mickey Andrews. That was the zone blitz that time by Mickey Andrews. He brought the slot man and played zone behind it. This is old time football, folks. This is your grandpa's football. 10 7 and some head knocking going on with these two. Washington, third catch at about the 15 yard line. But, Gary, what uh, what should the Noel Brain Trust think about right here? We speculated about the, uh, the backup Xavier Lee. Tight, tense game. They're going to stick with Weatherford, it looks like. Sure does. You know, what I think it looks like is they're going to have to take the training wheels off this offense. They're trying to get Drew Weatherford to throw a lot of short passes. I think they're going to have to throw the ball downfield more. Miami is squatting on every play in the second one. Looks like he's a little dejected. He'd like to get out there. and He was, folks, he was a great run pass right over at Seabreeze High School over in Daytona. They have got to think about Xavier Lee. That was Xavier biggest... Lee is too dangerous an athlete not to put out there in that situation, folks. Let me tell you, Xavier Lee as a runner is about as dangerous a person as you could put out there right now. Xavier Lee had his helmet before that series started. He thought he might be going in. He went to put his helmet back. Kelly Jennings that time had the biggest drop maybe of the football game. That hit him right between the numbers, and he just coughed it up. And it wasn't even a tough catch. It was right at him. Remember, this battle between these quarterbacks, it didn't end until late this summer in an August scrimmage when Weatherford's production was better than Xavier Lee. Xavier was slowed by a shoulder injury, and now the Knowles are going to call a timeout. There's only one timeout left in the game. Florida State has it. I mean, this is no knock on, on Weatherford. I mean, he may come on to be a terrific quarterback for Florida State. But uh, I, I really think you've got to take a look at this at this other youngster because the battle between the two of them was that close. Well, right now, the way Miami is ganging up on the Florida State receivers, there has to be another dimension added Absolutely. to the game. Absolutely. Florida State needs something else to bring to the table. Here's that last dropped interception. Drew Weatherford runs out. Thinks he's got a guy wide open, throws it right to the Miami, right in the hands. And number two, two chops it. No, you can't, you don't get an easier one than that. So here we are at the top of the hour with Gary Danielson and Jack Arruda. I'm Brett Musburger. It's Miami and Florida State, and it is a low scoring game. Only 17 points. Very much up in the air. Still three minutes to go. Miami's exhausted its timeouts. Florida State down to one. The passing attack for Florida State, well, there hasn't been one. Five of 20 for 51 yards and one interception. Kyle Wright, 8 of 18, 134 in his first start for the Canes. Two interceptions, but he did have a big touchdown pass. Now on second down, into the middle. First down at the 30-yard line. To Cody Fagg. He went to the Hargrave Military Academy before he came here to Florida State. 16 yards, and he has been the only wideout to catch anything tonight. And he went on Devin Hester. Devin Hester, the nickelback, comes in, the square in. Miami is forcing Florida State to throw the ball to the wide receivers. Florida State must do it if they have any expectation of moving the ball. They're daring him to do it. Using the shotgun, Washington over to the right. Booker's out. Underneath, only gained a yard or so as Booker was unable to get away from Merriweather. 
Weatherford got knocked down again after he let that ball go. You don't have a lot of time. You have to throw it on timing every time in this football game. Well, again, the opening kickoff, and it will start the festivities at 8 Eastern an hour later. The Raiders and the Patriots. Tom Brady and the amazing New England Patriots. Can they uh, keep it going? Who would have known after watching him split time as a quarterback with Drew Henson that he'd be knocking on the Hall of Fame with the great, great job that he has done for the Patriots. Man, what a story. Second down. Weatherford's hit on the release. Incomplete. It'll be third down coming up. We talked about the Canes now 0 of 10. Florida State's only 2 of 12. And uh, the pressure by Harris that time. Orion Harris had somewhat of an off year last year. Had that bump shoulder. But he's the playmaker inside. He's the one that Florida State needs to block every time and account for. And you can see he got into Weatherford just as he let the ball go. Kind of a wide pass by Weatherford on that play, but had big 92 in his face. Rod Owens, a freshman receiver from Jacksonville, has checked in number 86 for the Knowles. Third down. They search for somebody to give them some yards here. Incomplete, and the intended receiver was Chris Davis, and the crowd said, you call one against us on the other side. What about that one? But Jennings you know, may have timed it pretty well. Yeah, you know, Brent, I think what the crowd was saying is even if he would have caught it, he wouldn't have made the first down. I don't think the precision on, they didn't like the pass. You know, they've been here when Winky's throwing the ball over the field, Charlie Ward throwing the ball over the field. They just didn't like that call. So Chris Hall, as a result of it, trots out onto the field. And the Canes will be looking for some field possession. Again, takes a Seminole bounce to the 33-yard line. Well, time for many now. Stay tuned for the thrifty Carmelo postgame report with John Craig and Aaron. They'd have highlights and analysis of uh, some of the big games this weekend. Tonight, another big weekend coming up. Don't forget Notre Dame, Michigan, High Noon, and Ann Arbor. And that'll be exciting. Then the triple header will end with Texas, Ohio State from Columbus. Weatherford's on the phone talking to uh, and, Jeff Biden. And the crowd is cheering because Xavier Lee is warming up. Kyle White under center. doing didn't throw it and he is sacked at the 29 yard line by Wimbley who's having a terrific game in that defensive line for the Knowles that is the sixth sack of Kyle Wright here tonight Xavier Lee is up with the head coach and I think Bobby has made the decision he was pointing right at him he's got the helmet on the youngster he's taking snaps from Castillo the starting center now remember in high school he was very much a shotgun quarterback. They would line him up over at Seabreeze High School, and he was simply a better athlete than anybody else. He has a rocket for an arm. So we shall see how he handles the pressure and the situation. Right is a goal down again, the seventh sack of this game, and the Noah was trying to take it away, but they don't. Jack Childers said he was down right there. Well, that was, that was an absolutely jailbreak rush that time. They just came. No one was blocked. Inside, Miami turns him loose. Outside, Church comes. There was nowhere to go, nowhere to look on that one. Wimbley and friends, Flewellen, the rest of them. Nicky Andrews' bunch is starting to beat up on him now as the final seconds tick away. You don't want to miss the fourth quarter of this one. I mean, this is a dandy. This is college football Florida style. Who will step up and be the big hero? And Xavier Lee, what will he look like when he comes in the game? We're about to find out. I like the way they move. Like 
Some terrific performances here tonight. Some mistakes, as you would expect, in the first game. The struggles by both quarterbacks, especially of Florida State. And now third and 25, and Miami 0 of 10 on third down. Odds are stacked against them on third and 25. Looking for room for the punter. Did not get much on that play. Hill the fullback. And so now it will be the punter, Brian Monroe, who's had one blocked here tonight. And Florida State could not take advantage of it. So the Knowles will send Washington back deep to return. And now Miami is kicking into the wind. Fine return to the 44-yard line. And now, of course, the, uh, the moment that the fans have waited for. Wait until you hear this ovation as soon as they spot. Xavier Lee, number nine, is 6'4", 227, out of Daytona Beach Seabreeze. Here it comes, folks. Shirted a year ago. And they are going to back him off into the shotgun, as we expected. There's some old Charlie Ward plays around here, and the coach will just kind of dust them off. The reverse. A beautiful play on first down. Booker to the 31 yard line. Well, Gary, you said. They just need an extra dimension, they do. and right away, we saw. And they do. That's what the spread gives you. When you can't block those seven guys up front, you go to the shotgun spread. But in modern football, you must have a guy at the shotgun spread that's either a terrific passer or a runner and a passer. And that's what Xavier's going to bring to this offense, a little more dimension of balance from the shotgun. I think you watch him in practice, I mean, he just looks, his air about him, he just looks like he's born to play quarterback. Now remember, he was slowed by an injured shoulder. Here comes the reverse. They want to throw to Xavier Lee this time. They're going to throw an incomplete. And what a smart move by Chris Davis. There's a penalty flag down at the line of scrimmage. You know, Chris Davis was a high school quarterback. So he was very calm with the football in his hand and made a really, really bright play there. had to there. be some illegal man downfield yeah, right? that when you yeah. think about him running for his life over there. Jack Childress will sort it all out for us here. Absolutely. It was supposed to be a reverse. Sure. <laughs> Davis, he, quarterback at heart, but you know it was a good thing if he just didn't have the illegal receiver. Well, he down was going to lose 20, 15 yards anyway. You know, uh, we talked about Xavier and the shoulder because he'd be in a passing situation probably here. We asked him how he injured the shoulder. I hurt my shoulder just trying to throw. Uh, like I know I'm going to throw pretty hard, but like a few plays, there was someone in front of me, so I tried to jerk it back, so I went hit my hand on the helmet, and it just uh, my bursts in my shoulder flared up on me. Now we shall see, because uh, in high school, in the division that Seabreeze played in, he was simply better than everybody else. And now, of course, that talent pool levels out, and uh, he will be tested in all phases of the game, understanding what they must do, not making the critical mistake, checking the wristband. Remember, they're using wristbands here. The play, the number is signaled into him. He's relayed the play, and away he'll go now from the shotgun. Got to hurry. Leon Washington called timeout before the snap. And that would be the game's last timeout, am I correct? It will be. <laughs> well. Unless Chris Weber shows up, they're out of timeout. That's right. <laughs> Chris, Jerry's just kidding. I mean, Gary's a Michigander. He wouldn't do that to you. Timeout, Nick Xavier Lee's coming up. Garnett and Gold as you're watching the BCS Spotlight game presented by ADT. It is 10-7. Florida State scored 10 points 
in the first quarter and hasn't scored since. Remember, they didn't score in the second half down in Miami. The Canes scored in the second quarter, so neither team has put a point on the board here in the second half. Booker, the receiver, throws incomplete. Uh, a little bit uh, miscommunication there or something, and it is second down and long. That was way off the mark. Xavier Lee has really struggled in passing scrimmages this fall. His potential is enormous. I mean, he has Vincent Young type potential as a quarterback athlete, moving with the ball, throwing the ball, big arm. But he struggled completing passes so far in the fall in practice. Think Jamarcus Russell. Whoa. Right through his hands. And Xavier just goes right down on it at the 44 yard line. This will be third down and a bunch. Well, until he gets on the field, the most popular player on campus is always the backup quarterback. Well, that one was catchable, but I've seen a lot of drops tonight. That was just another one. A lot of mistakes by a lot of players here. Some of them on force. That was an on force error. Kelly Jennings had an on force error on an interception potentially. Now third and too far. And now you might as well just set it up for your punt team. You're ahead 10 to 7. Or throw it as far as you can. <laughs> Don't turn it over. And Xavier can throw it. He can throw it, boy. Whips one in to the 42 yard line to Kenny O'Neill, his target. And at least he jogs off the field with a completion under his belt. And now Hall will attempt to. Uh, Bury Devin Hester and the Hurricanes inside the 20. Hester is back on the field to attempt a return. He has struggled a little bit tonight as a return man. Bad judgment. Juggle the ball. It's, this is a good punter he's up against. Signaling fair catch on the run. And lets that one go inside the 10 yard line and down. At about, you can see it marked at the four yard line. Pat Watkins, the All American safety, number 22. That ball was kicked high enough that Devin Hester has to make a play on that one. You can't allow that thing to be down inside the four when you can make a fair catch on the 18 yard line. He is really hesitating he really tonight, has. Hester is. He really has. He's not no, he's quite had sure two, what to do. He's had turf toe all fall. He missed some practice. And maybe he just is not in the flow of this football game. He has not looked good all night. And also, Chris Hall deserves some credit for where he's putting the ball, too. He's making it tough. And now, speaking of tough, Kyle Wright has to go the hard way here. And you just know Mickey Andrews is going to turn this defense loose down here. And last time Kyle Wright was in, he was tattooed by a three-man blitz. Moss is out to the left side of the formation. The lone wideout for the Canes. They're going to keep it nice and conservative. This will be second down and long. You can see number 83, Senaris Moss, on the field. You check some of the uh, receiving statistics. Olsen is the Canes' leading target tonight. Four catches for 73 yards, even though he did drop two big ones in the game and Moss has one catch for 10 yards well it, I think he did that on the end of the round too didn't he second down and 10 play fake right from the end zone throws high got his man over there Moss boy that was an impressive throw because he had a linebacker coming right at Kyle Wright he got tattooed to play earlier. He showed great courage. Watch, coming out, watch the linebacker come right at him as he lets this thing go right in and throws it right down the sideline. A perfect throw to the outside, and Moss makes the catch. That was pretty impressive by Kyle Wright. First down and 10, the ball on the 17-yard line. the belly of the beast uh, out to the 21 yard line on first down Moss tonight
just two yards shy of a hundred yard rushing night. And when you look back at his career against Florida State and how much he's struggled there, the Canes yes. have to be very, right. very proud of what he's done here tonight. He looks better, but you know, Florida State has figured out a way to make those corners better players. The front four and the linebackers keep hitting the quarterback before he throws the ball. Checking that scoreboard, 10-15 to go. 10-7 the count. Showing a power formation, they're gonna throw out of it. Wright's on the run for his life. Throws it incomplete. Again, good awareness, not taking the sack, not taking the loss that time, dumping it out. It'll be second down. Wembley has had a fabulous game for Coach Andrews. You know, uh, Florida State's defense, three defensive players were drafted off that front four last year, but Wembley, a non-starter, played as much as the two drafted defensive ends. So he did not start, but you can tell he got a lot of playing time last year, and he looks even better this year. Now Moore has caught a couple of passes for 52 yards. This is a third down. Can Miami convert finally on a third down? They do. Olsen the tight end. First down, and there is Kyle Wright's first conversion of a third down for 15 yards it goes to his tight end Greg Olson. Mickey Andrews has had success with the three-man rush on third down. This time he uses the three-man rush and the Miami offensive line picks it up allowing the receiver to get past the linebackers and Olson to catch it and turn up. The first time that the three-man rush didn't put pressure on the quarterback and Kyle Wright makes the throw for the first down. I think that's the last time we'll see that in this game. First down and 10. Moss bangs to the 39-yard line. Watkins, you know, we were talking about uh, Olsen. We had a chance to ask Kyle Wright about, uh, about going to number 82. Great athlete, unbelievable hands. I think could be one of the better tight ends to ever come out of here. And uh, he's the type of guy you look to in, you know, kind of a crucial situation. Played basketball, knows how to find the zone and, and sit down and get open. Yeah, because early in this game, he had the dropsies, but he's come back. Second down. Incomplete. Under pressure that time. A.J. Nicholson, outside linebacker. Both linebackers came. The weak side linebacker, strong side linebacker from the outside, putting pressure on the quarterback has been the best defense for Florida State. Seven sacks in this football game for Florida State. Winston, McMeans, Wolfslager, Bain, and Butler up to the line of scrimmage for the Canes. Third down again. First down Boy, across I, 45. Now I'm twice surprised. in a row, Kyle Wright able to hit yeah. Olsen. I'm surprised, Brent. Three-man rush again. Ernie Sims lined up outside. He faked it. Watch him fake and then drop back. A three-man rush. Nobody in his face. Goes to Olsen. Out to the outside. Easy pitch and catch. I'm shocked that back-to-back -back third down plays with the way they've been able to put pressure on Kyle Wright that they rush three men. Olsen down to the left side of the formation. Now they come back with Thomas, the running back. Slowly but surely, the Canes grinding it down the field here in the fourth quarter. Plenty of time. Both teams are out of timeouts. Nine plays on this drive. Moving the ball down. Two big third down conversions. The first two of the game, right, Brent? Isn't that, yeah, the first two of the game on this drive. Second down, and there's that, that three-man look again. 
Now they blitz off it. And they've got a man in there for the sack. The school record continues to grow as Sam McGrew comes unblocked. The hey, Chris, greatest number of sacks ever allowed by a Miami line. They stunt their linebackers. One guy goes inside, the other linebacker crosses, and the three-man line this time with the blitz is the way to attack it. That Miami offensive line is really struggling with the inside pass rush. The two tackles, Butler and Winston, are doing a pretty good job. But inside, the Miami offensive line is very porous. McGrew off being congratulated for that sack. Third and very long here. Yeah, 19. down conversions in a row and that one the biggest of all now remember Third and 19 a 26 yarder Olsen is matched up with Buster Davis here Buster Davis may be 5'9 you've got a linebacker that's not looking at you no pass rush again only three men come you throw it right at the back of the linebacker's head and let your big Jeremy Shockey make oh, I'm sorry Chris Olsen make the play Play fake to him. Right complete to Hill, the fullback, who is smacked at the 21 yard line. So, again, a reminder now at 12 Eastern, Notre Dame and Michigan will start off our triple header. Then we'll have regional coverage around the country. And then at night, we'll cap it off with the first ever meeting between the Longhorns of Texas and the Ohio State Buckeyes. Everybody looking forward to that game, I'm sure. Can't wait to get up to Columbus. And uh, Ernie Sims, is he shaking up on this play? I believe he's down. You know what? Uh, he may be down, but he, all, he also may be saying, my defenders are dog tired. There is no one on that Florida State team. They are sucking wind and perhaps a way to get his guy some rest because there's no timeouts left in this football game. I remember now, Ernie uh, came, came off, off an injury. They're looking at a. Uh, they're looking at that right knee down there. That training staff showing concern here. He had a broken bone, missed all spring football this year. But boy, look at all of the Florida State players. They took their helmets off. They are sucking wind. That would be a real heads-up play for him to take an injury like that. I'll tell you that because they were out of gas, completely out of gas. for Miami against the Andrews called defenses. Now all of a sudden three straight third downs with three man rushes has come back to haunt Florida State. Kyle Wright is thrown for better than 200 yards. On the drive here second down. The youngster in his first start coming after him again and they hand off Thomas. Thomas stopped at the 20 yard line it'll be third down and about four so with Gary Danielson and Jack Arute I'm Brent Musburger our Pacific Life game summary a low scoring defensive battle here tonight using the fullback for the Knowles touchdown in the first half the pass to Moore for the Miami touchdown and Florida State the most sacks ever against the Miami Hurricane team. The 14th play in this drive. Remember, it started back on their own three-yard line after Watkins downed the punt there. Now it is third down. Knowles are coming again. Can't get there on time. That's a first down. And but that was a what tremendous a play. throw under enormous pressure Absolutely. again to Olsen. He knew he had his go-to guy, man-to-man -man coverage that time. He was zeroed in on him. He knew Olsen was there, and he just let that ball go perfectly. And we've got another cramping situation here. Earlier it was Tyrone Moss. Now it's Olsen. And again, it is early, early in the season, and the humidity here of Florida, and uh, 
Both these teams giving it all in this rivalry. Comes out, man-to-man -man coverage, throws the ball. Look at that throw right on the numbers. Olsen knows he's got the first down. He catches it and ducks down for the first down. Are you surprised that Mickey's given him a release off the line well, like that, Gary? He, he almost has to on that one, Brenny. He, he blitzed both outside linebackers trying to put pressure right. on the Right. Wouldn't you think that instead of the blitz, you try to hold up the tight end who's killing him? Well, he, he's tried three different strategies against Olsen, and they, neither one of them worked. And that time, he matched him up man-to-man. -man, and, boy, you got to give Kyle Wright credit because he had a guy coming right at his face, and he makes it. But free release on a secondary guy, he made it work. First down and 10. I think Miami yeah, jumped the gun there. It was whistled before, yeah. the, uh, before the snap. To give you an idea of just how impressive Greg Olson has been on this drive, the young man from Wayne, New Jersey, who transferred from Notre Dame. Prior to the snap, that was a false start. Number 61 of the offense. That's he a has four penalty. catches it's on this drive down. on third down, all of them resulting on a first down. One of them was third and 19. There is a comfort zone settling in here, and it is number three to number 82 for the Canes. It shades of Jeremy Shockey, Kellen Winslow, all of the great. Rod Chazinski who's down on the sideline. All these tight ends who've been around for Miami. It's tight in you, folks. And once again, first down. In a foot race, sprinting hard in the pocket. Fires on the run. Caught inside the five-yard line. Kyle Wright running hard to the left. Throws to Ryan Moore. It's first and goal. And we've got a quarterback growing up right in front of us. Boy, Dan Warner just pulled a great call out on this one. He sensed the blitz. He got Kyle Wright outside the pocket. Watch him square his shoulders, throw the ball, and Ryan Moore slides, makes the catch. The guy who had the drops last year comes up with two huge catches. Moss is back in at running back for the Kane. Tyrone picks his way just across the two-yard line, probably, where the linesman will spot the ball. Miami answered the bell when Florida State had the ball first and goal. Can Florida State's defense answer the ball not bell now against Miami? Miami now, if you want to think play-action pass, this is the down to do it. This is your best opportunity to play action pass and get that ball to one of your tight ends. I'd run the quarterback draw with this kid. A lot of people close to the line of scrimmage right here. Wright's going to throw. Sprinting to the right. Looking for the target. And instead, he'll take a loss back to the eight-yard line. And it is third down. That was a big mental mistake by Kyle Wright on that play. If it's not there, you got to sail it out of the back of the end zone and line up. That's the ninth sack of this game. Youth is still youth, no matter what you do about it. Oh, absolutely. Yep. Going to be a learning process. But he has shown great stuff here tonight. Miami loves to wiggle the tight end down at this part of the field. He's on the left side of the formation. They swing it instead to Moss, who can't get there. But now the field goal to tie it as Tony Carter, the corner, comes up. I'm not sure they were going to score on that play. Parallel against that Noel speed on defense. That's a tough way to go down there. They're going to call a penalty on Florida State here, though. Eric Winston at least is signaling a penalty on Florida State. The Knoll coaches are on the field. Let's uh, let's wait now to this see what be Jack a tough tells penalty. us. This would be a tough penalty. Taking the helmet off 
has been waved off. There is no foul. No foul. The helmet was knocked off the player. They're calling Sims with his helmet off, but they're now saying he got his helmet knocked off on the play, so they're not going to call the penalty. This for the tie. No. Another kicking mistake for Coker in Miami. Can this be the Knowles year? The kicking game is finally going in their direction. Another bad snap. This one was low, the last one was high. Ball is low. Hunter can't handle it. Now remember, Monroe is a new holder. He is the punter. That could have been handled. It was not perfect, but I've seen holders handle balls like that, and so has Coach Coker. We got a timeout, folks. It's Florida State and Miami. It's a dandy. College football on ABC is brought to you by Dr. Pepper and your local Dr. Pepper bottler. Dr. Pepper, one taste, you get it. Dodge, you can take life as it comes, or you can grab life by the horns. And singular, raising the bar. Drew Weatherford checks back into the game. Xavier Lee given that one series down here in dangerous territory. They feel that Weatherford obviously can handle the offense a little bit better. Now remember, Miami is without a timeout. We're at the 215 mark here. They can go to work on the clock big time. Miami cannot stop it. You would think the Knowles are coming to a running game, and you would think Miami would expect that. Breaks free. Washington close to a first down. That's almost good news that they get to run another play before they get a first down and eat more clock. Now Drew Weatherford should take all of the play clock before he snaps the ball. We're going to have a measurement on the field. Well, at halftime, we talked about the out of whack stat, and it's just got more whack here. Florida State, it's been the history of this game. The kicking game has gone to Miami. But in this game, two missed field goals and a bad snap. And you can see the kicking game has fell to Florida State. Inside of two minutes now after the measurement. quarterback sneak here you can't hand the ball backwards you can't you lose yardage he did exactly that keeping the clock stops after the first down Gary, let's take a look at our Dodge defensive playbook. And Pardon. what else could it be? Nine sacks, a school record against Miami, giving up nine sacks. And in the last, the third quarter, this was a trifecta. A tackle, a linebacker, and a defensive end all get Kyle Wright. That has really been the story of how they've stopped Miami. Because when Wright has had time to throw the ball in the second half, he's been very good. Clock continues to run. They cannot stop it. We talked about stopping the run. You can see both teams' defense. The tiebreaker has been the sacks. Quarterback pressure harassed the quarterback. It's gone to Florida State. But in all reality, Brent, both teams got it inside the five and got zero when they went down there. My game ball goes to Mickey Andrews. This defense 
was something to watch here tonight. And this crowd will erupt. That six-game losing streak to Miami has ended. It wasn't pretty, but the Knowles will take it. And many of the players are jumping into the student section directly across from me and to my left. The players are being hoisted up there into the arms of the students, and we'll check in down below with Jack. Coach, finally, you kind of started the streak. Now you're 1-0 against Miami. Congratulations. Yeah, it comes when you would least expect it, and uh, we're very thankful to win it. Your defense just played super. Uh, we, we got some work on our quarterback. Yeah, let's talk about that, the decision-making process to take two out in that one series. What were you looking for? Nothing was happening. Nothing was happening. With another guy we didn't feel like was as well prepared, but uh, he uh, thought maybe he could make something happen. But he made two big mistakes uh, that really hurt us, but that, that, we're playing with Franklin. When you take a look at this victory, what do you take out of it for the rest of the chase of the ACC in a positive note? Well, it's the first time in seven years that we have beaten the University of Miami. And so we got another ball game Saturday. So we got to find out what our problems are. I see what they are. I hope we can do something about it. And they are what? Uh, our quarterbacks have got to play more. We've got to play better. Thanks, Coach. Yeah. Jack, and tonight some Chevrolet players of the game recognizing that this was a defensive game. We are going to point out what Tyrone Moss brought to that running game tonight, over 100 yards. We're going to pick on Cameron Wimbley. You could pick a half dozen different defensive players, but Wimbley helped bring the heat tonight. And in recognition of their efforts, Chevrolet makes a $1,000 contribution to each university's general scholarship fund. Gary? Well, your game ball went to Mickey Andrews. My game ball goes to the two recorded recruiting coordinators at Miami and Florida State. Great athletes making a lot of plays. We'll wrap it up in a moment here on ABC. No question that the win today belongs to Florida State because of their defense, and their defensive leader, Ernie Sims, joins me. Ernie, how important was it to step up defensively, knowing that on the offensive side of the ball, you had young talent under center? Well, the main thing was that everybody had to do their job. We came into the game saying that everybody, if everybody's in their gap, we knew we could win this ball game. Now, let me take you back to the fourth quarter. There was a moment when you went down with what looked to be an injury. Just how injured were you when they took that timeout, when you guys were out of timeout, and you were on the field being attended to by the trainers? Well, in a way, we, need, we needed some time to uh, regroup ourselves and everything, but at the same time, I was, you know what I'm saying, my knee was bothering me, and I really felt like I needed to get on the sideline and get it worked on. Brent, it was an Academy Award presentation, but it certainly helped when the defense needed a breather. Yeah, indeed, uh, Jack. Uh, Florida State will take this, uh, Gary. And uh, looking down the road, I thought that uh, Coach Bowden was uh, was very honest, as as he normally is. The uh, the quarterback has to be a work in progress right. here. But they ended it. It was low scoring. Defense did it. Uh, and for Miami, I, they can regroup. I I come away really impressed by Kyle Wright well, here. Well, Brent, remember when. Uh we saw that highlight of Miami winning the national championship. Howard Snellenberger said, we lost the game, but found a quarterback. I think the same could be said for Miami tonight. Absolutely. Florida State, I think, though, has regained the pride in their defense. They win when they rush the quarterback, and they rush the quarterback tonight. And, uh, you know, for Coach Bowden, it didn't come back down to a field goal. In fact, his kicking game was number one. A final word in a moment. And something that we will all watch. And of course, we open up our hearts uh, to all our good friends down on the Gulf Coast. We hope that uh, for the rest of you, we offered a few hours of escape here tonight as Florida State was able to end a six game losing streak, beating Miami. And Thursday at 8 Eastern, catch NFL's opening kickoff, followed by the Raiders versus the Patriots. Again, 10 7. Knowles win it. This has been a presentation of ABC Sports Championship Television. So long, everybody.